Hello! Welcome to Shattermare Comics Live, Episode 2. Um, so this will be for posterity, um, since we've just got a handful of people watching. Uh, but I'm very excited. I'm muting, I'm muting William. I'm very excited uh, because we have a special guest today. Uh, a friend of mine that I've been able to meet through uh, some shows and a uh, wonderful artist that we worked with. So I guess before we introduce uh, him, let's introduce all of us. Um, start with uh, Death Metal Hero, down diagonally from me. Hello, and greetings. <laughs> so this is Luke. He's a phenomenal artist working for us, with us, on a book called Mercenary Guild. Uh, and then we've got Frank, who's the colorist of that as well. Hey, hey. Um, and then we've got William, who is the writer. That's right. I created all this bullshit. You're going to love it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all this, all this mercenary guild nonsense, which uh, you right. know, it ain't nonsense. This is this is going to be a fun story. Everybody going to love this one. Be a in hell fact, of a good fantasy run, man. You know, in fact, you y'all, y'all better Show go that. ahead and sign up for the uh, for the the sign up list so you can get your uh, get your exclusive Nicole the Elven Sorcerer's trading card. Uh, We're not playing the original games, artwork. Here, folks. We're gonna give yep. you a great fantasy comic and a great That's idea, right. and no knockoffs, man. Yeah, we're yeah. having fun. We're telling a fun story. So yeah, yeah. Fun, uh, go sign up, and that way you can get this card. And uh, you know, Bane says uh, I want you for Mercenary Guild. So uh, listen straight. to Bane. Bane knows what's up. That's right. And we'll uh, we'll show the the sign up page. B A I N, folks. Not I'm not ripping off. Uh, the Batman villain. The, the oh, you're not, not going after uh, Chuck Dixon and uh, and Graham Nolan's uh, nope. creation, huh? It's B A I N. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Do a, <laughs> do a crossover or something right? of that nature. So get, to, um, get Chuck to come come help us out. That'd be awesome. Love Chuck. Yeah, I'll just I'll just hire him out of uh, Eric July's pocket. I guess I'll steal him from. Good the, luck with that. The reverse. <laughs> Probably be happier. It, it, well. I, I dim him up and I say, "Hey, I can I can for sure half of what he's paying you. You think that would work?" <laughs> so. I, I I don't know. You know, let's just well well let's let's get established more first. How about that? How about that? Right. So I don't and I it. yes, and I am Brian. I am the head of Shatterman Comics. I guess my my ta- my online title now is a man called Horse. I was in another stream and they, I didn't show my face. So they were like, "Oh, you're you're the horse. You're the horseman." So, but that's also taken. I, I think I think so that I name's taken now. Horseman. So, yeah, Damn, um, Eric. So, you, I mean, oh you could God. be the the horse with no name. Curse yeah. you, Chuck Dixon. Um, a man, <laughs> a man, <of> horse. <laughs> um, the man formerly known as Horse. But folks, he is not your boy Zach, even though he sounds like him. He's not. That's right. He doesn't cough. I, I'm yeah. I'm like I'm like your boy Zach without the cough. So, that's right. What you call me. Um, but anyways, without further ado, uh, we uh, we have a special guest tonight. His name is Tracy Lesh. You guys might be familiar with some of his work on a little game, uh, tabletop game called Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so let's go ahead and meet Tracy. Hey, how's it going? Hey, What's hey, up, Tracy? how's it going, guys? Hey, hey Tracy, good. welcome. Thank you so, very much. Glad yeah. to be here. So why don't you um, tell them, tell the tell the folks at home who will be viewing this video one day, a little about yourself and what you've done for D and D. Well, um, back in about uh, 1974, uh, when I was uh, still in junior high, and uh, I hadn't yet started uh, doing any pro- anything professional because, of course, I was just a kid. Um, but I happened to um, have one of the uh, Gygaxes in my history class with me. Uh, Elise Gygax, one of the daughters of uh, Gary Gygax. And um, she sat behind me in history. And uh, I was always like uh, drawing and doodling in my uh, notebook because, frankly, history was a boring class to me. Not because I didn't like history, but... Because my father, 
all his life he's been like a, he was like an amateur historian so of course being his kid he shares all those stories with me and you know we watch historical movies together and stuff like that um and uh so history i kind of like snooze through most of it because i was like yeah i know that already i know that story yeah i know all about that okay give me my test all right let me get my a <laughs> and the rest right. of the time i was drawing so elise uh, would look over my shoulder and she could see what i was doodling in my notebook well one day when we were uh, leaving class she comes up to me and she's like hey would it be okay if i took your notebook and showed that to my dad and i was like sure whatever i don't care <laughs> so right she did and uh the next thing i knew i was getting a call um from gary and he was like hey um would you be willing to come over to our house i'd like to discuss some stuff with you so i did um and we went down into the famous basement where a lot of magic happened and we talked down game. there yeah what's that that's where they war gamed right they played yep. all their war yep. games and, and smoked cigarettes and yes just, sir got rowdy you know till all <laughs> hours of the night you know it's what i heard. and there was a there was a big table set up down there too because a lot of times they were doing like uh miniature campaigns which were just I thought that was like so awesome to to look at uh, when they would have like a battle set up and the dioramas and stuff. And I'd be like, wow, I wish I could do that. So anyway, we're down there and um, it's kind of funny because my attention was diverted because there were all of these tools for shoe cobbling because I guess Gary did that um, before, you know, becoming a famous guy and all that. So, so you I'm just had at, all those tools sitting there as well? Yeah, like stuff to fix the shoes and to stretch the leather and all that stuff. And I was like, hmm, that's kind of interesting. So he, he says, hey, you know, I think I might want to have you do some drawing for me. Would you be willing to do that? And I, I was awesome. like, well, you know, tell me more. And uh, at that point, he handed me uh, the wood grain AD&D set. Uh, you know, with the first three books in there. And uh, he also gave me the silver cover chain mail yeah. um, rules. Chain mail. And he said, yeah. oh yeah. So he's like, well, take these home and I want you to read through them and see if that inspires you to, to, to do anything. So I did. And the next thing I knew, um, I was... Um, doing some pieces for Blackmore, uh, the supplement. And uh, basically, I got to create the Mind Flayer and the Roper. Nice. Because uh, um, Gary, Gary didn't, like, really give me any detailed notes or anything. He would kind of give just, like, a maybe a very general impression you know, he might say, well, I, I want it to be like that and that and that, you know, and that's all he would tell you. And then it was up to, up to you to, to kind of like, um, you know, try to come up with a vision for it. So and I was very like 14, lucky. 14, 14, 15 years old. Yeah, this was, was uh, well, the Blackmore stuff stand. was uh, <laughs> 75. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the mind flare and the roper, I brought those back to him, and he was like uh, really super happy about it. He's like, you know what? He's like, you you nailed these. This is what I had in my head. And he said, you have set the look for these these two monsters. And then we just you know we just went from there, and I did stuff for um, I'm blanking Eldritch Wizardry. Um, Arduin Dragon modules? Magazine. What's that? Arduin module? Did you do the Arduin modules? Uh, no, I don't. No, I don't believe okay. so. All right. Um. So. So yeah, just a bunch of stuff, and then uh. Yeah, so do just you remember uh, the what, what, Sorry, do you remember the description no. that he gave you for the Mind Flayer? I guess as example. 
He basically said um, the head has to be like a squid. And uh, he said, I'd like to see like like four tentacles around the mouth. And I was like, yeah, I think I could do that. Um, and he just, other than that, he Hell said yeah. this was like a very evil sort of uh, humanoid. And I was just type character. And I was like, okay. And oh, and he talked briefly about psionics, which he was... He wanted to incorporate into the game, and um, oh wow! So, so then as I thought about it, I was like, okay, well, um, figuring this out should be pretty easy. So, if you've seen the the drawing in Blackmore, um, he's basically humanoid. Uh, he's got a, a robe on, and um, the drawing indicates that he's doing something mentally. Because uh, to me. My vision was, along with what the squid, the squid part of it, I thought of him as like a very evil sort of a Ming the Merciless character from Flash Gordon, and then um, and then uh, combined with maybe Professor X from Marvel uh, with yeah. his mental abilities. Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, there you go. So though I I put that together, and what I came with came up with was from, from that inspiration because i was a comics kid from you know from birth practically hell yeah uh, man after right. my own heart right. oh yeah <laughs> that's yeah. that's what we uh, like my to talk dm about is that. actually in the in the chat here he says uh the mind flare illithids are his favorite things from dnd <laughs> ever great freaking design yeah, yeah we're, we're <laughs> playing you. with those and uh Very cthulhu cthulhu uh, oh yeah and I think that was uh, the Cthulhu part was uh, what inspired Gary to want to have a character that 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 looked like that. And I think it, um, I think at at one time he showed me a, there was a paperback that uh, it was like a sci-fi story. I think it was a well-known sci-fi story. And on on the planet where the where the spaceman was, you know, there were where there were tentacles coming up out of a crater. And he said, yeah, I'm kind of like, you know, something like that. Um, so very loose, though. Um, Existential so horror sort of is like, always a good thing to play with. Oh, sure. Sure, sure. <laughs> and then Eldritch Wizardry. Um, mm -hmm. I did what would become known as the first Lich for D&D &D, um, yeah, depicted. Yeah, I remember that. That's an iconic picture. You know, with his conjuring. Thank you, thank you. Signature on the side. Uh, of yeah. The picture on the in the monster manual. I think it even has your signature. It's just. Oh, cool, cool, cool. I think it does. I haven't seen one in so long. Uh, I'm the wrong person to ask. <laughs> I don't. I don't have any of that uh, original original stuff anymore. <clears throat> I wish I did. I bet. I could probably pay a yeah. lot of bills. Did you? You also drew the Beholder, right? Or because I know there's there's a huge war between Illithids and Beholders, like they hate it. Like, and did you did you draw that? Or I know there's a whole like Beholders come from Zoriat uh, plane with the Rascounds, and they ruled it. And then I think Behold or Illithids went there and tried to take it over the way they do. Is hmm. there a space or plain old planar travelers or whatever? But anyway, did you did you draw the beholder too, or was that not the beholder? Um, actually, the first beholder I had ever seen was on the cover of Greyhawk, that was uh, drawn by Greg Bell. And at the time, pretty much the art was like either Greg Bell or me. Or like little sort of pieces that Gary had gotten from friends, like in college and stuff like that. Um, and this was before even Darlene uh, did the hippogriff on one of the first covers. But um, yeah, so uh, that was the first Beholder I had ever seen. I never really got to uh, have a crack at one. I, that would have been cool. It could have been. That would have been a lot of fun. Um, yeah. And then the second one I had seen done i think was uh hmm i think maybe diesel the force possibly okay yeah i should draw one yeah, sometime I mean, you know i never have 
you know, I should just like take a crack at one, and see what I could yeah. do. What better time? Just than for that, fun, you know. <laughs> well, it's crazy to me that you created these characters based off of, you know, somewhat brief description of from Gary, yeah. and yeah. I mean, these are iconic. I mean, like like I uh, highlighted Amanda's comment. I mean, in the newest Baldur's Gate game, which blew up. I mean, they went crazy for a yeah. turn-based RPG game. of the game. year. Game, game of, of the year, year yeah. Uh, and it's... Mind Flayers are all over that. Yep, so... yeah, they are. <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah. So how's that been for you to see the evolution of, of D&D over the last, you know, 45 years or almost 50 oh. years, I guess? It's and been... Um... You're in so early when it really kind of was wasn't such a big thing and now it's just so huge yeah it's it's yeah. it's bittersweet um because the, to tell you the truth like i don't know that a lot of people remember uh what i had done um you know i'm not really sure i don't really have a feel for for that you know you guys would probably know better than i would but um uh, I was glad to have worked on on what I did. Um, I was in early enough to where um, I wasn't in their office, their first office, which was like a, you know a converted house that they you know <clears throat> put office furniture in. Like a garage um, or something. It was like a there was like a a white craftsman house across from the Pizza Hut in Lake Geneva, and <laughs> they. Nice. <laughs> they had bought it and uh it had a lot of rooms so those became offices for various folks oh, yeah. um yeah i remember going into brian bloom's office one day because um uh because of boot hill um and he was a big western fan love um boot hill. <clears throat> love that game yeah that's got a lot of my stuff in it and uh it also has a drawing in there from uh my father um so he got to contribute to and um we kind of teamed up on my pieces you know he would advise me and um so th that was that was really cool because in a way that became sort of iconic at the time and uh everybody knew the cover and then um i mean eventually it got revised i think it's been revised like five times um you know with different art and stuff but I was so happy to have worked on the first one, and uh, yeah, yeah, because Good TSR memories. was, you know, I grew up during that time. They were pumping out, um, obviously, Gamma World. It's a great game, and uh, oh, Star love Gamma World. We 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 play Star Frontiers. That that is the best sci-fi role-playing game still to this day, in my opinion. Was any of your artwork in any of that, like Gamma World, Star Frontiers, uh, Boot? Obviously, you mentioned Boot Hill top secret which was i didn't get a thing. chance yeah i didn't i didn't get a chance um for the most part i was like just like a freelancer uh for a while and uh there i understand and i don't want to go too far into it because i don't have all the facts but as i understand it there was somebody who came on staff at TSR and really, really bad mouthed me b badly behind my back. Jeez. You know, that, you know, you shouldn't use his art. You know, he sucks. Let's get him out of there. Really? Like I said, I don't have the facts. It's just sort of what I've heard in, in through the grapevine. If that's the true story, well, wow. you know, that's really sad because, I mean, who knows what we could have done, you know, in, in years, you know, later. So, like, did you draw, like, the succubus and things like that in the monster manual? Uh, the succubus... Or like, or, like, deities, the demigods, you draw a lot of that stuff? Or... No, mine was mainly the uh, the first, the, the Blackmore module, the Eldritch Wizardry module, Boot Hill, um, the dungeon board game. Yeah, I love that fucking game. That game was awesome. Yeah, I was like super heavily involved in that. Uh, 
I even got you to guys do gotta some. Pick that up, man! Holy night, that is a fun pick up and play board game it's a... that kind of has a D and D vibe to it, but you don't have to be into D and D to enjoy it. You know? No, it's a great uh, gateway game, you know, to to bring people <laughs> into the hobby because it's it's easy to play. Uh, it doesn't take that long unless you want it to. You could always make it a longer game and change the rules a little bit, but you could play a quick, you know half hour 45 minute game of dungeon and have a great time and especially uh it was i think it was great for kids too like you know who, who could like get in on the ground floor and uh play a D game and then maybe move on from there and really get into uh gaming and stuff like that i hope i hope that's what happened you that's know, that what we, uh, we did actually yeah. in my community is that in fifth grade Oh, play dungeon and then oh, if you want to expand on it we have this dungeon dragons and okay hunt. so it, it's kind of like how they, nowadays they have the intro they'll have like an intro kit mm -hmm. i mean it oh, wasn't yeah. was it tsr or is a separate no, it was board TSR. game oh it was no TSR. it was okay. yeah it was tsr okay yeah, it was gotcha. a board game but it, it made things you can be an elf a wizard a dwarf it was mm. based on like ba the basic rules kind of in a way it was yeah, a, a way to kind of get people into into tabletop RPG without all of the uh, you know the heavy overhead. Think of like the game right. of life, yeah. the board game life, only with yeah. Dungeon Dragons, and there you go. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, like Hero Quest. Yep. That game is like a very expanded version of Dungeon. Okay. It's yeah, like Dungeon, cool. but let's put it, let's add all of these bells and whistles, and we'll we'll put some minis with it. And it'll yeah, be really cool. Back in, yeah, yeah, a lot of the, I played a game like that. Descent is similar, where they basically mm -hmm. add back in the minis, and you get card, character, hero cards, and items, and all kinds. Dude, of that stuff. Descent board game is is something amazing. Like, uh, it's cool. I had that at one point. It's it's pretty pretty epic. There are a lot of yeah, they're in depth now. It's it's basically just D and D, a kit D and D kit in a yeah. board game because they even yep. give you. You can't see my fingers, but they even give you rearrangeable tiles, and they've got like codes. They've got like a key where you have to arrange them to and flip them over, and what scene you're in, all that stuff. So, um, yeah, that that's so cool. I mean, the expansion kits are wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's it's cool that it all stemmed basically from you know dungeon. So that that was one of the questions I had for you, Tracy. Is yeah. So because. I mean, D and D, Dungeons and Dragons, obviously became very popular. Um, oh, part of yeah. that, yeah, and, and I mean, arguably the predominant tabletop tabletop game, like not even just tabletop RPGs, tabletop game. Period. Um, you could argue. Back then, were there kind of contemporary competitors to to D and D, or did those come later, kind of after the fact? They came later. Um, I don't know what what order because you had a lot of similar sounding games, you know, like castles and crusades and. Um, oh yeah, that <laughs> some of the other one popular. <laughs> using <laughs> yeah, alliteration all over the place. It's, um, you know, I I lived through it, so so obviously TSR had their own, and they had a genre for everybody. So if you want to play a James Bond, it was top secret and it was really yep. good if you want to play sci-fi oh, that's cool it, it was uh star frontiers and it was d100 it was really cool and then he mentioned boot hill if you want to play western or if you want to play apocalyptic yeah. they had gamma world and uh but I mean, hell even marvel jumps into the came up tabletop as as, thing as far as right, fantasy, the marvel. i think the first real competitor was middle earth role-playing uh merp uh, from Ice Crown Enterprises, oh, who yeah. eventually mm -hmm. developed the Master. Interesting. So, did they? I mean, did they license Lord of the Rings? Was that yeah. why it was called Middle Earth? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just want so to double you check. Could, you could play as a Hobbit, and 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 a lot of their stuff was. Uh, you mean they didn't get sued? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Right. Because I know some the name to that, Halfling. I know some people that got sued, man. Oh, yeah. Well, wow. I know that that Gygax and those guys could not use Hobbit, and they couldn't use Trent or Ent. They had to make it a Trent, and they had to use Halfling <laughs> for Hobbit because the Tolkien estate would not allow them to use those things. 
<laughs> yeah, they tried. They tried at first, and then, you know, that had to be all, you know, rescinded. Um, but, but yeah, that, that was interesting. Plus, um, they also were, they wanted to put out, uh, this is going to be a sad story for me. They wanted to put out a number of, uh, modules based on Edgar Rice Burroughs, uh, Warrior of Mars, you know. Nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. John Carter. The John Carter stuff. Yeah, mm. that'd be great. That's cool. So he even um, he even had me do like a number of drawings, uh, ink drawings for um, an upcoming Barsoom um, module because he had put out the one uh, I think it was Warrior of Mars, and then the next one was just going to be Barsoom. So I did like four uh, pictures for that, like um, you know Carter against some um, uh, not the Thoats. Trying to think of the black, the black striped creatures. Anyway, um, I did a bunch of those, which I was really proud of. And then they never saw the light of day because the Burroughs folks threatened lawsuits and they couldn't, they couldn't have Warrior Mars out there anymore. So anyone that has one of those, it's like, you, it's like you got a bar of gold in your hand because right. they're so scarce. They were just a grail piece for a lot of people. Yeah, but, for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Cor correct me if I'm mistaken here, but when you did the uh, the, the Blackmore module, uh, you knocked out quite a bit of art in a relatively short amount of time, didn't you? Uh, Blackmore, I think, just has the two monsters for... Uh, it's right at the introduction of the Wilderness campaign. Um, now, I don't know, maybe you're, yeah. maybe you're thinking about the Tomb of Horrors? Hey, Tomb of Horrors, there we go, yes, thank you. Yeah. Oh god, that <laughs> fucking, dude, that module's brutal. Oh my god, don't even bring that up. <laughs> so for that one, uh, Gary was going to show it for the first time at Origins, and, um, all he had were like, all these typewritten notes and stuff. It wasn't even like, you know, officially prepared or printed or anything. But um, he called me up and he said, look, um, I'm in a bind. I got to go. I got to take this uh, Tomb of Horrors to this convention and it's going to be introduced there. But there's like no illustrations for it. And um, I'd, he, he needed like... Uh, between 28 and 30 illustrations that he wanted. And um, I had to do that within like a two week period. So yeah. I was drawing like crazy. Um, so if, if you see the, um, there's a, a reprint uh, version of it in the um, Art and Arcana book, if you're familiar with that. Got it right back here. Ancient Arcana. Yeah. Uh, if you bought the the deluxe one, um, it had a reprint. They printed the Tomb of Horrors in there like a an actual module. Yeah, that's one of the um, no, I have version. the actual module. Oh, cool! Nice. Yeah, I do. It, it, it's unbelievable. Like you, I don't know. Look at a mirror, and you you get spit out, and, and you're a woman now. Like you're the opposite sex. It's just fucking <laughs> brutal, man. Shit that would not play today, man. <laughs> there were so many traps. It was like crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Trust me, I was the thief I mean, in that module. Two, two weeks. I mean, that that is that's a lot to crank out in that time. I, I yeah, I had to really, yeah. I Lots had to really bust and... them out. <laughs> <laughs> Man, oh, wow. what a what a time to be involved with something like this, though. Just at the beginning, getting getting to craft the the way you know people see the world, you know, giving to yeah. getting a chance to you know put to put a visual stamp on it, help people visualize it. You know, that's that's amazing, man. Yeah, you are, are your visual templates, and mm -hmm. some of them become very memorable and iconic. Um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, and I incredible. I say. Before I said my involvement was bittersweet because it's like my mm. stuff. Um, I never, I never got any of my originals back. Wow. Um, yeah. Damn. And 
when TSR closed its doors, that stuff like went into a trash bin, from what I understand. Or people people took certain pieces Sorry. that they wanted for themselves right. and sort of took them like a collector. And uh, uh, so I don't know what of mine is, is still out there, but like I never had access to my original art, artwork again. Mm-hmm. And um, anytime any of that stuff has been reprinted, I don't I don't see a dime of that. You know, yeah, too bad. That's awful. That sucks, Killing man. Me. Because yeah, like you, you really like. were, like you were, Ditko, and shit like that of D and D, for real. I, I'm That's not high praise. <laughs> no, yeah, you were that. Because I'm a huge Ditko fan. Well, you were Ditko. I mean, you, you're that great. guy. For for a lot of us, a lot of our early images of D and D are definitely definitely your artwork. You drew yeah, a lot of sure. boobies, man, and that really helped me. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's transition into focus. William. Uh... That's right. I'm, I'm working on a on new right one. Path. You got me on the right path, homie. <laughs> oh man, we. Is there, so yeah, I've got a, a specific. I've got a super key, sexy key. woman in the works right now that I'm trying to finish up. So oh, I'll yeah. post that on board uh, here, man. Sword and so, sorcery and, my... and hot and sexy women go hand in hand in hand. Oh yeah, so, yeah they do. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Can we? Uh, Presetta's, oh, no, Presetta's oh, my god, <laughs> man. <laughs> Where one yes. has gone? That's right. Uh, I've got a Presetta book back here too. Yeah. Love me some Frazetta, dude. Godfather of the sword and sorcery genre. I so, ran to uh, the... And his daughter is taking care of the legacy, too. Yeah. Very well. Yeah. Very well, too. Very well. Yeah. She does yeah. a great job. Yeah. Sarah's, Sarah's I used awesome. To rush I'm down... so proud of her. I used to rush to the newsstand every month to get, like, a creepy magazine because yeah. I knew it was going to have a, a Frazetta uh, cover art. Yeah. You know? That's... From the yeah. Oh, you got the same oh, wow. book, Frank. Yes. Yes, absolutely. That's cool. great book. Oh, fantastic. Love for Zeta. Well, um, I love Vallejo. that piece too. Yeah, oh, yeah. Julie oh, Bell. Awesome as well. Yeah. Oh. Speaking of speaking of which, Boris Vallejo, show... Julie Bell. Yeah, man. Yeah. Why don't we show some of your stuff, Tracy? Um, so this well, is that, that, that Lich had like this called, thing called D A T by it, and I never. Yeah. So well, so this is uh, this is Tracy's. Maybe I was wrong. This is Tracy's book, uh, Armor of God, the Paladin. Uh, there's some incredible artwork on the cover here. Uh, so just to show this off, um, you guys can see this, right? Nope. I'm just, just talking to myself. You can't. Yeah, you're, you're just, just you're just yourself. talking to yourself there, buddy. Oh crap! <laughs> you gotta actually present it. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> that was. How embarrassing. Oh, okay. oh. Uh, so here we go. go. Yeah. Now we can see it. So I had the, I had the pleasure of reading through this um, when I met Tracy. Uh, we met at a small show in Orlando, I believe. Uh, QuestCon. Mm-hmm. Awesome. QuestCon. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Boomer. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I picked up a copy of this. It was good. Um, oh, from thank you. Um, right? And I actually only... posted Tracy's Amazon author page link in the, in the chat, so you guys can uh, hit that link so, and yeah, go check support our up. boy on Amazon. Pick up his books. Awesome. Yeah. You're originally so. from Wisconsin, though. Is that how you got in touch with the Dicax? Uh I was uh, I was born in Chicago, and lived you know in the near the Wisconsin border for many years, and then uh, and then my dad. He decided he wanted to uh, build a house in Wisconsin, and um, so that was right around the time I was uh, getting into junior high school. And then, you know, I told you the story about me and Elise Gygax, and that's that's how it went from there. So, in the right place at the right time, I guess. I guess. Yeah. I'm originally from Minnesota, that's, that's but I grew time. up in the Bay Area most of my life, so. Oh my dad! I mean, um, I'm a the beast, you know. Cool. Yeah, my we have we've got relatives in Minnesota, and uh, my dad was born in St. Paul. Yeah, I was born in Minneapolis. Same thing. Yeah, there's one from '79 that I just I posted the other day just for grins. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just want to show some of the stuff off on your, did your you, timeline. Did you draw the Umber Hulk in the uh, AD&D? Uh, the Umber Hulk would have been Dave Sutherland, I believe. Okay. Yeah, so I really think old they school, fucked him nice. up in third edition. Uh, <laughs> usually, if it's, if it's, usually if it's something of mine, it's going to have a lot of detail to it. Oh, hey. This oh, looks like familiar. That <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that's a classic oh, right that, there. That was so much fun to work on. I had such a blast putting that together. An instant the classic of 2023. <laughs> the right? coloring, I was, I'm very happy with the coloring. <laughs> Yeah, this was awesome. this was fun, and we have a little uh, little Easter egg guy in the back here. Oh, from there's somebody in the chat that on. says they can't see anything. Uh oh, uh, you might be. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I can see it on on YouTube. Uh, make sure you're caught up, uh, Cicero. Make sure you're on you're on live. Uh, if, if the stream's lagging, um, otherwise I don't know what to tell you, man. Yeah, and we're also streaming to X and Instagram. Yeah, also awesome. it might be it might yeah, run better there. To you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why Elon doesn't take that. You should you should have the that endorsement hundred percent. Anyways, oh, while that, we're here, I'm gonna, that... <laughs> I'm gonna shill some Hardly Heroes. So we had Tracy do a cover for us, uh, in in the style of a of a nice uh, old school D and D cover art, um, and uh, we actually did a exclusive for quest con this past year um which you can find right here so he's got a little he's got a little gray beard uh quest con exclusive you can find right on our website uh while while supplies last i think we did yeah we got 15 on the website so you can get um uh, get out of here do you have any autographed ones left uh i do yeah yeah so you can oh, get yeah. it you can get the bundle a little discount there and yeah uh anything you order off the website for this cover will be signed by kyle and tracy um Kick ass. so there you go let me actually show what it here you go you want? yeah so there you can get the are. bundle trade virgin there you go you don't have to be a virgin to get this cover. <laughs> People ask me at shows. But if you are, I mean. <laughs> but if you are, I'm not going to stop now, you. Now, if you sacrifice a virgin, you'll get all the covers. Right. Just <laughs> make sure you right. leave a good re make sure you leave a good review on the website. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I had to sacrifice a virgin to get this cover. And it was. But I was happy. Uh -huh. <laughs> and all of my dreams came true. That's right. So making oh, making man. deals to get the covers. You yeah. can even get my book if you're a virgin. I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, so we'll sell the book uh, to anybody. <laughs> there you yeah, go. Straight. That's that's a good segue. So we're working on another fantasy book. I think Luke uh, put it in the the chat or flying feline. Well, yeah, feline uh, put the the sign up for Fe mercenary. Feline guild in the chat. is gold, man. She yeah. is gold. She's, man. I gotta give yep, you a raise. She's my better half. She's my partner in crime. Hey guys, I'm gonna step away for just a second, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Go ahead. Oh, what do I do? Hit the stop cam. Yep, and go. then just hit mute. Um, yeah, yeah just mute, mute the mic. You out. There you go. I, I'll be back in just a sec. Sounds good. Um, yeah. So, I guess we can. We'll wait till Tracy gets back because there's a couple of couple of modern D and D topics, articles, current events that I want to get his take on. Uh, and um, I actually have a, a, a question about a piece of artwork. Uh, there's a there's a sleeping warrior uh, piece that Feline has had in her possession uh, since you know since the 80s, uh, um, and I want to ask him about it. We've been trying like hell to figure out who the artist is. Okay, uh, I'm gonna the name too, says and easily on it. But we haven't been able to find the name, and I would like to see more of this artist's work uh, if we can find him. Uh, so yeah, uh, when he gets back, I want to ask about. Uh, but while we're waiting, I can I can switch my camera, and everybody can see the. Uh, oh, 
it's, yeah. It work oh, so, you, so you're keeping the original art, is what you're telling me. <laughs> well, I've got it. I've currently got it here. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this is Nicole, the Elven Sorceress. Actually, both of these pieces are going to be up on the campaign when they go when we go live. That's so people right. will be able to buy these pieces. Yeah. Keep so, it from uh, going in the trash, like <laughs> some of that. Yeah. that oh, I hold yeah, on to this, everything, man. This can go directly into your trash if you purchase it off of the campaign. <laughs> don't, don't, uh, don't, don't tell don't do me that. though. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't tell me that though. I don't, I don't want to hear about it if that's the case. You know, uh, it might, might uh, hurt my, my, my tender little artist feelings to hear that. But yeah, yeah this is uh, Nicole, the Elven that. Sorceress. Uh, sign up at the uh, mercenaryguild.com uh, so you can get this exclusive Nicole, the Elven Sorceress trading card. Uh, you won't be able to get this any other way. And then this is uh, this is Bane Specter, uh, the leader of the go. Mercenary look Guild. Yeah, look at that. Uh, this and both of these pieces will be available on the campaign for you to purchase uh, when you when you order the book. But yeah, this is uh, this is for our promo poster. Uh, Bane wants you to join the Mercenary <laughs> Guild. That's right. Man, that looks yeah. so good. Thank you. So detailed. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, this is what the book is going to look like as well. Uh, just, just throwing that out there. That's what, the, that's what the book is going to look like inside. Uh, so, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, we're having so, a lot of fun on this book. You know, we're, we're, as you can tell, we're all a bunch of fucking D&D &D nerds. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I yeah. I feel like we're kind of recapturing the magic of you know that small team, uh, like yeah. you were talking about Tracy from back in the day. Yeah. You know, we're, oh, we do yeah, it over Discord it mostly, from but somebody who was OG D and D man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, Straight it's up, that's man. that's kind of how I feel when we get on art calls and we're you know reviewing, um, stuff like this, you know, stuff for the book. Oh, we uh, we nerd out hardcore. It's yeah. It's no, but funny. that that Bane, probably spend... Bane wants you is all Luke, man. That was his vision. I I had no idea yeah. he was gonna make a hat like that. <laughs> yeah, I think we spent more time nerding natural. out than working it like Slash. Over here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Tracy, I was wondering if if you could help me out. Uh, feel my my girlfriend Feline uh, has this piece. Uh, the name down here says Easley. We have not been able to figure out, like, I've never been able to find anything more on this artist. And I was wondering if maybe you knew who this artist was. Hmm. So uh, I've seen. Bigger. Yeah. Is there, is that a signature on it? At, yeah. At the bottom? Enhance. Yeah, it says easily 82. <laughs> okay. So this was a Jeff Easley piece? I Jeff know this Easley. is um, okay. Uh, yeah, Jeff Easley. This is Drelzna, um, the vampire this is from the, from, the uh, uh, let's see, Lost Caverns of Chisalneth or whatever. Sojkant. Uh, Sojkant. So 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 Sojkant. Thank you. Sojkant. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, Jeff I, Easley. My. I, have I was in a party that faced off against uh, Drelzna, so I'm, I'm familiar with her. <laughs> Awesome. And that's her name, Drelznoth? Drelznoth. D R E L. Drelz. Uh, Z N A. I'll put that it was in her wow. name before Tracy's that's, party. Killed that's her. amazing. <laughs> Man, that's you, great. We've, we've been trying there to figure out what the character's name was and. Uh, oops, I went too far. Uh, we've been trying to figure out the character's name and the artist's name for uh, for years now. So you just wow. you just helped us out uh, big time, man. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, not a problem. Yeah, it's uh, a great she's had this piece. piece. Yeah, I love I love the uh, the rendering, the hatching, the cross hatching, the uh, oh, the, yeah. the contrast that he was able to get with just like pen and ink. This is the type of stuff that that is is indicative of like you know old fantasy artwork. You know, like the old savage sort of Conan type mm -hmm. stuff. Like oh yeah, early like indie type stuff as well this is i love yeah, this stuff great huge Look at the carpet oh, it's what i love to do and cross hatching yeah yep she's had uh she's had her with her uh since uh 83 is when uh, is when she she actually uh swiped this out of out of the dm's book i believe she said 
Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So she's had this for a long time. So, yeah, we've been trying to figure out who this the who this artist was for a long time. So, dude, thank you so much. Oh, no problem. Yeah, I'm looking at the signature now. That's definitely easily. Awesome. Nice. Yeah, and I, I remember seeing this because um, I think our DM put it up in the uh, Discord when we were playing, you know, uh, to, you know, give us a visual of uh, Drelzna. So, yeah, I remember seeing that piece and going, wow, that's cool. But Drelzna is freaking frightening. You can, to you go can up against. Up, you can I look bet. up the modules, the Lost Caverns of so so Soja Camp, and because uh, that has some new monsters in it too. That was a landmark. I mean, that <laughs> really paved the way for Monster Manual too. Um, because a lot of those creatures ended up in there to really go D and D nerd out. Have you ever played know, White Plume you... Mountain? Yeah, White Plume. Uh, wow. That's legendary. White with, Plume and, and uh, God. With the menagerie? <laughs> it's just, it, it, you know, and the, the element, what's that elemental? Like, what's that one? Oh, fuck. It, the water elemental? B2, B, did you do anything on B2, Keep on the Borderlands? Because that was, oh, yeah. Pack in, that was the pack in module for the basic set. And that was, and D Dungeons and Dragons Online has that as a uh uh purchasable purchasable kit and i just want to know if you had anything to do because that really was everybody's introduction to dd and it was fucking hack and slash and so much mm -hmm. fun so talk about that i want to hear about that i've uh i've played them um i uh i didn't get to work on any of those uh modules i was already kind of gone at that point um well that sucks yeah, so basically mine were in the old format, the digest uh, format, and then of course um, <clears throat> later I did uh, I did some work for Dragon Magazine. Uh, yeah, nice. And uh, I'm trying to think of what else. <clears throat> Losing my voice here. I had to get my water. It was in the other room. Got to stay hydrated, especially when doing these live yeah, streams. That's so. right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, well, uh, so well, Dragon Magazine was landmark. I mean, so many for sure. new rules and oh, things yeah. for first edition came out of there, and so much great writing mm -hmm. and great new magic weapons. And even like, I remember uh, Dragon Annual Four, which was landmark, and it was it, it basically told you the perspective of every race and just kind of how they were. Mm -hmm. uh, in a more in-depth format and it was just unbelievable how just anyways the artwork was fantastic it, the magazine was hugely successful for years yeah and it's uh quite collectible today yeah um well since we got done talking it about it uh, happens huh yeah mm -hmm. since we got oh, talk yeah. <laughs> done talking about classic D D and and all the nostalgia you guys want to check in on um how how wizards is doing today like what what some of the things they're coming out with are well i, I got uh, an opinion so, or two so okay uh, feline has a question for tracy before we jump into that oh, are we ahead, ever in ahead. fate magazine uh she wants to know which which magazine uh fate magazine f-a-t-e fate magazine i don't i don't believe so i don't believe so is that similar to Dragon? I would assume. I'm guessing so. I'm I'm not I'm not familiar with it. Uh, you know, she was she was playing D and D. Hey, you, know, uh, you know, way back when. Can so. I can I just tell a quick funny story? There were some people going through an old Wizard magazine. Remember those? Oh, I guess it wasn't. Oh, yeah. No. They were going through yeah. Wizard, and they came across a Cyber Frog ad from the 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 nineties cyber frog from Ethan Van Skyver. So yeah, it, Ethan was reviewing it. And he goes, "Wow, they didn't even mention the ad." But he didn't even know he was in Wizard magazine. He's like, "Well, okay, <laughs> cyber frog ad. Okay, cool." You know. Yeah, the uh, uh, Hall of Heroes is where it started, and then I went to Harris Comics. I actually, have I was just Harris gonna books. 
Yeah, I was just going to throw that out because I have that issue with nice. uh, Ethan Van Skyver. And it's like a black and white uh, in independent uh, comic book. It had a nice oh, slick got cover. Some of the old Hall of Heroes ones? Yeah, yeah. I have like wow, three of them. Nice. <laughs> Dude, uh, hold on to those, uh, or you know, if you if you really yeah. really need to to pay some bills, you can sell those for a pretty penny on uh, on eBay. Sure, like they're cool. they're going yeah. for a lot of bucks now. So send them to EBS I mean, and get them signed, and list right? them on eBay. And then, then get them CGC; they'll be worth even more. Uh, sure, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm gonna uh, CGC a bunch. Uh, I'm like rearranging right. my comic boxes, hey, of right. which I have like 36 long boxes. Ah, uh, Tracy, and you're so a man we... after my own heart, man. Oh, Tracy, <laughs> I've got like right 24 place, of them and, and like uh, like 15 uh, short boxes. So yeah, and I've, I've got a couple of these spinner racks as well. Oh, so, yeah, that is so. so cool! Where did you get that? Uh, I got that it on cool. uh, on Amazon a couple years ago. Yeah, uh, this, nice. this is actually a magazine spin rack, but you know I can mm -hmm. I can actually you know splay them out a little bit so you can see a, a, a spread of them as, as well. So yeah, man. Uh, Amazon. Uh, I was able to get them for like eighty bucks a piece. It was great. That's that's cool. I might need to get yeah. one for my office and 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 put a bunch oh, of vintage comics in it. Yes. Yeah. And if you get the magazine oh, yeah. size, you can actually put like the old Savage Sword of Conan and like the new uh, Prestige format books that they put out, like the the DC Black Label and like you know the the Ronin uh, TMNT Ronin and stuff. Oh yeah, the new. So, yeah, yeah, highly yeah, recommend the magazine size ones. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, yeah, I got some magazines I could put in there. Uh, I came across some. I was going through some boxes. Uh, I'm still like going through boxes from our. We moved like last year, and I still have stuff Insane. in storage. So I was going through it, and all of a sudden I got like, oh look, here's here's Doc Savage magazine, and yeah. here's famous monsters of Filmland. And I, it was just, Dude. I just have like a box of random magazines, mm -hmm. <laughs> all different titles and sci-fi magazines. A lot of them from when Star Wars first came out, everybody was doing Ooh. a story on Star Wars and yeah, putting sure, photos yeah. out. And yeah. so I'll have to liquidate well, all that. Hey, Tracy, I mean, it, like it, your, yeah, uh, they sell. Your, they really I do. Really like your uh, background. Is any of that your, is that your work or is that? Uh, no, this is like, um, uh, a collection and of posters and stuff that I've uh, I've kept over the years. Um, a lot of what you're seeing back here, like uh, there's like two Captain Americas. The smaller one is part of a 20 poster set that I got when I joined. Um, there was a little Marvel organization called Foom. I don't know if you've ever uh, heard of it. Friends of Old Marvel, yeah, yeah, Heck yeah, yes, I, sir, know. I know, I know Foom. <clears throat> And um, so I joined that and I was getting Foom Magazine. I think it was like bi-monthly. Um, yeah, man. And they had an offer in there. They're like, you can get a set of 20 Foom posters, you know, for like next to nothing. So I bought them and, I, and for the longest time I had them in storage and I never did anything with them. So once we moved, um, I, I started framing them, framing them as you can see the smaller ones down here. Captain America next Sergeant to him Fury is Sergeant Fury. Yeah. yeah. Now above that smaller Captain America is a larger one. Uh, that was a, a 1970s Marvel Mania poster, and there were four of them in there. If if you were to see the other walls in my office, I also have the uh, there was the Amazing Spider-Man one. Uh, Incredible Hulk by Herb Trimpey nice. and Doctor Doom by uh, Jack Kirby. Oh, hell yeah, dude! Kirby. I wish awesome. I could pan this, but dude. it's my computer. No, so. no, right. We're good, man. <laughs> oh, and then uh, if you look up above, Sergeant Fury, that is a uh, that's from a FX, one of the FX shows. So Stranko was there, and he oh, signed nice. the program for me, and I put it in a you know, a sealed thing there. And Stranko's I talked with Stranko great, for, for like 45 minutes. We just like shot the breeze. And um, we it. were talking about how Jack Kirby used him as the template for Mr. Miracle over at DC mm -hmm. yeah. because Stranko was like an amateur magician yeah, and an he would show artist. Jack. Yeah. 
And so Jack Kirby uh, was inspired by him, and uh, he was Mr. Miracle, and never got oh. any credit for that. But up, <laughs> so up above that signed FX thing is a, a cover from Nick Fury, Agent of Shield, um, which is one of the awesome. Foom posters. Next to that, to the left, uh, there's a Green Hornet, Green Hornet poster that was given to me by Jeff Butler, and he signed that for me at GaryCon. Awesome. Super. Uh, then wow. the Batman, uh, and you can't see it, but next to the Batman, there's a photo of me and Stan Lee. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. But yeah, my yeah. if you if you were to uh, see my office, all the walls look like that. Well, I'm happy to stop by any time. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> right? You yeah. can all, we can take a field you, trip. Yeah, you'd be welcome. You'd Walk be welcome. By. I. <laughs> You know, when Jack Kirby was alive, uh, people could just like drop in at his house and he'd sit down with them and let them watch him work and stuff like that. Yeah, and wow, his wow, wife cool. would make him lunch and stuff like that. It's like There's a reason uh, why so Kirby told, was the king. I yeah. Understand. And I always told myself, you know, if, if I was ever able to, I would want to treat people the same way. Like if Absolutely. you dropped off at my house, I'd be like, yeah, come on in. You know, let me get you some lunch. Let me get you some coffee. Let's look at art. Let's, you know, let's doodle. Let's look at comics, etc. Play some D&D, you know? man. <laughs> Play we, some dungeon. Right. <laughs> we had some good coffee when we visited. Rock and back. roll. Yeah, I'm so glad yeah, you man. guys came. It was it was nice to have you guys visit. Yeah. You're always welcome. Awesome. Yeah, we uh maybe maybe we could do some D&D in the future. Uh, so, Feline wants to know what your shirt says. Uh, oh, the diners, shirt drive says, what? Diners. diners, drive-ins, and dragons roll for flavor. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. great. Nice. That's awesome. Um, so, Tracy, I have a, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Have Have you heard of um, this? Is uh, so? Uh, I guess in recent history, uh, Wizards of the Co Coast is promoting more third-party designers. Mm -hmm. Um, I have an article about how they just laid off like a thousand employees, but we won't look at yeah. that. That's Yikes. we could talk about it. We'll see. It it kind it's kind of overlaps, kind of overlaps. But um, that might have to do with it. Maybe they don't have as many in house you know talent anymore. They might be knocking on your door, begging you to come back because they have um they have such creative people uh, creating such new work of art uh, like. The combat wheelchair. Have you heard about this? Mm -hmm. What? Have, yeah, I have not heard about this. <laughs> have, you, have you guys yeah. heard about? This? Okay. Yes. So yes. let me. I already have an idea for my next character. So, <laughs> they even have <laughs> miniatures. Uh, so, so they're pushing this hard. I mean, this is so silly. This, uh, yeah, it, just it really is. Because like this. a first level healer can fix that problem. <laughs> uh oh, we, uh, we'll just have to decide how deep we want. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we can go deep into the psychology of this, or we can just make fun of it like 20 ways towards Sunday. I'll, I'll let you guys decide. But just to juxtapose, we went from this, right, uh, to now we're at, uh, what, this? Oh, hold on. We went, uh, sorry, let me, ah, I fucked it up. So we went from Tra Tracy and the, the magic of Dungeons and Dragons to the combat wheelchair. <laughs> I mean, Which, if you're oh gonna do something like that, why not make it look like an actual combat? Ch like, make it look like a fucking yeah. tank or something. Jesus, no. yeah, it's got to no be. It's got to be badass. It's, but right? it's, but but they've got 14 subclasses apparently. 14 oh, subclasses. Wow. <laughs> so they're they're doing all Is kinds of stuff. Is the image a link, or can you mark? click I, on it to expand it? I can't. Uh, I just can't. Don't hate. So <laughs> I, I would still. immediately create a character using well, combat wheelchair. Yeah, like you guys. But, but ironically, <laughs> I here, mean, you guys see that better? Here's some okay. fan made art, maybe. I don't know. Uh, it holds a lantern. So, yeah. Well, so, uh, okay, let's get, let's my buddy Donald wheel. Delay. My buddy Donald Delay. He's a he's a comic book artist. He's got uh, he's doing Jaeger Bomb right now. He actually posted a manga of this dude in a <laughs> fucking combat wheelchair but the thing transforms into a fucking tank it's got oh, spikes yeah. all over it it looks like he could run you the fuck over with it <laughs> like if you're gonna do something like this <laughs> lean into it go well, all out of it don't yeah, yeah. just do half-ass okay. shit 
But then they wouldn't. But then it would be the tank doing the thing. Well, not maybe the, like, maybe the make it like Tensor's yeah. wheelchair. Sure. Yeah, yeah, so see, that's old discs. all the wheels could be <laughs> tensors floating discs. Yeah, right? I know right. tensors and big B. You well, seriously make it Xavier's cool floating uh know. floating hover chair. Come yep, on, are, get creative with this shit if you're gonna do this. But but you guys are missing the point. This wheelchair <laughs> establishes a baseline for inclusivity, okay? So you, hey, what, hey, what I got I got <laughs> news for you. you. D &D no, D &D was already, already inclusive. inclusive. Anybody <laughs> could play. I forgot you have that echo effect. That's awesome. I am so I should know, I so should they... tell you a story of my early playing later. <laughs> oh, I'd love man. to hear it. Oh, oh, God. God. Look at this. Oh, but, I, you guys just reminded me. When I when I started oh, playing, I got stuck no. with like this this uh, low level elf character, and they they really weren't good at anything except they had very high uh, ventriloquism, <laughs> and so we were we were in a dungeon and everyone's making fun of my character. In fact, when I when I did a drawing of it later, I, I put a big chicken on his shield because he was really kind of useless but <laughs> when we encountered a dragon my guy had a chance to shine because he confronted the dragon and made the sounds of a female dragon in heat and threw his voice <laughs> into the other room yeah. after wow. after successfully rolling yes. i kid you not that dragon got up and chased into the other room to find this uh, female that he heard. We scooped <laughs> up treasure. We scooped up treasure, and we got the hell out of there. It was it was glorious. That's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> but and you know, using biology to your advantage. Hell yeah! <laughs> that's, right. That's, right. that's right. That's right. Wow, that's actually creative. Yeah. And in an on horny way. bard way. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yep. It's, that's that's good shit. See, that's that's the creativity that that D and D, the tabletop, is supposed to inspire. You know, you're supposed yeah. to use your mind. Wow. Your mind is your greatest weapon when you're playing one of these games. You know, you got to be in your character. You gotta you gotta use your mind to actually be a part of it. That's part of role playing. You know, using your creativity to create the story with your fellow players. That's part of it. You know, I, I feel like a lot of D&D &D these days is is just like, you know, give me all, make it a video game. And at that point, yeah. you're not playing RPG, you're just, you're playing a, a set track that they've created for yeah. you, you know? I, I mean, want pencils lost the point. and paper. Yeah. When we were kids, it, it was funny because, again, AD&D didn't have a lot of skill rules or any of that. It was all house ruled, a lot of stuff, so... Like, all right, we're going to charge into mm -hmm. the orcs with our lance. And our DM was like, roll a D20. And it's like, hey, 20. Okay, you got 20 orcs on the lance. They're all, yeah. <laughs> you know, there you go. <laughs> it's just you know, it's like we were in fifth Orc grade. Kebab. We didn't give a shit, you know. But, you know, here's the, there's nothing stopping anyone from playing however they want, regardless, you know. If oh, you absolutely. are the type of person exactly. that is like, uh, I'm creatively, you know uh bankrupt then i can just play it like a video game or you know if i want to have fun with it do whatever you can toss the rule book out the window and do whatever the fuck you want you know yeah yeah that's why i think it'll persist that's the beauty where, of it where like modern a lot of modern media like video games and, and movies or what have you you know it's it's uh it has established canon whereas D D, you can make up your own canon anytime I mean, yeah, anywhere some for people wanna whatever you want so through their world and some people want to run an adventure that's already written you know it's i mean but, but my, my dm woodrow to... uh he the the campaigns that we play is, is highly homebrewed and we have a fucking blast Hell you know yeah. just you, you, you take you take the baseline and then you you, to, you be creative with it i know it's shocking and kind of hard for a lot of people these days but <laughs> you know Give it yeah, a, there was years. another, there was another cool aspect for me uh, back then, like uh, uh, starting to play, was that not just that I was playing with these guys that um, you know were like, they they would later go on to work 
for TSR and stuff, and we were all friends and we'd play, but... Um, shoot, I forgot where I was going with that. Anyway, uh, they entered... Yeah, okay. So these guys that I had played with, okay, they introduced me to playing D&D, but the other cool thing was they also introduced me to things like Avalon Hill games, um, Steve Jackson games. Yeah, like, I can't, yeah. I can't tell you how many times we just sat down, drank beer, and played Car Wars. Yeah. You know, and just wiped <laughs> each other <laughs> out. Car War. That was basically based on Road Warriors. Yeah. So it's it's kind of funny. So for me it was in reverse. It was all it was like D D was my gateway to all of gaming, tabletop yep. gaming and RPG. Because then um you got interested in trying other things. Mm -hmm. You know, even when when they you know were they were trying to teach me Avalon Hills Stalingrad, you know, and Panzer Blitz and stuff like that. And it was still a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, complicated rules, but um, then when Fight in the Skies came out, I was like all over that. I was like World War One uh, Aces. I'm all over that. Nice. Let's play. <laughs> you know. Yep. So D and D was my gateway drug to tabletop gaming. It encourages creativity. It encourages you yeah, to, I mean, we... to to think, and you, it helps to visualize. You know, As a lot kids, of people have trouble visualizing. Own, uh... I think these days. We use those yeah. rules to make our own Miami Vice game. Oh, cool. Miami, yeah, so we had our own Miami Vice game. And yeah. we used, uh, the theme like, song is secret. playing in my head right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. As soon as he said it. Oh, all right. <laughs> and Top Secret. Yeah, Somebody says mentioned the Top rules Secret. more like guidelines. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, um, I think uh, Star Mort Frontier mentioned rules. Top Secret earlier, yeah. And then when... Yeah, so, Oh, Top Secret had me uh, going for Mayfair's James Bond game when it came out. So, uh, like, I bought I bought the the basic book and and I bought some of the sets and uh, they put together some really beautiful sets that came in like boxes instead of just yeah. being like a a, a, a flat uh, cardboard that opened up and had some pages yeah. inside of it. Like they were like in an actual or... box. Yeah. And it, like a classy, so like I bought a bunch of those, but yeah, it was because playing Top Secret, I was like, well, hell, let me go, let me play James Bond from Mayfair, and we had a hell of a lot of fun with that. Oh, hey, uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. awesome, Matt. Yeah, D and D also led us to make comics as well, right? Led me to writing so. too, so. Well, I think as a kid, when I read those books, they weren't they weren't dumbed down. Uh, they were written at an adult level, and so you had to up mm -hmm. your game to understand the rules and, and what they were saying. And yeah. so I think it really increased uh, your brain power when it came to reading comprehension and reading. Oh period. yeah! And, oh yeah! Uh, for sure. Yeah. And especially if you're a GM, oh my God, you 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 got to know all, all kinds of stuff. Oh, right. You know? <laughs> and then world building for the writing aspect. Mm -hmm. I mean, we ripped off <clears throat> our early campaigns. We we did the Marston House from Salem's Lot. We did oh, Camp cool. Crystal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we did Camp Crystal Lake. That uh, is cool. You know, for D and D. I mean, it, it, we did crazy shit. You know, whatever we saw in the eighties on TV basically became. Uh, you know, we're playing Star Frontiers. All right, it's Alien. We know it. DM makes his own Alien. We or Terminator or whatever. I mean, we <laughs> we played it and we ripped it off full bow. It, it was great. It was great. We played oh, um, the OK Corral scenario in Boot Hill, and then all of a sudden the game master brought in, uh, dropped in like a, I think they were aliens in atomic armor. Oh, so you had all the aliens there. <laughs> yeah, it was, but it's you know it's it's that sort of creativity that you can do, and yeah. I was like right yeah, on board. I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. Yeah, cowboys and aliens became a thing. Yeah. You, know? you ever seen the Valley of Guanji? Oh no, I'm not familiar with that. 
That is a uh, movie about cowboys versus dinosaurs. <laughs> nice. With the effects by Ray Harryhausen. Oh. I'm, I'm putting the title in the chat. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you've I, never I, when I got into D and D, uh, probably third edition, three point five. Basically taught me to be an accountant because of all the math and adding you have to do in that game, all of the different <laughs> min maxing your character, you know, all That's the different hilarious. paths you can take. So, and I I love sure. Harry House and Flicks, man. Uh, growing up, those were some of my favorite movies. You know, Jason and the Argonauts. You know, Seven Voyages yeah. of Sinbad. Golden Voyage of yeah. Sinbad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. I just looked up Valley of Guanji. I have never seen it, though. I have seen a lot of stills from this movie. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I love the stop I this one. Perhaps. Give it a watch. You will thank me. I uh, will do. <laughs> we'll do. <laughs> it looks like it might be on Prime. Uh, Oh, sweet. I'll go ahead and yeah, it's drop great movie. That. Great movie. There's a there's a link to the IMDb page of that movie if you guys want to go ahead and check that out. <laughs> there you go. Very cool. <laughs> there you go. Like with the, with D and D now, it has become more. I don't know. Skill focus, min maxing. I mean, it started with uh, three point five, and it's funny because. Uh, segueing into this, like Baldur's Gate 3 just came out, game of the year, and they've severed ties with Wizards of the Coast just recently because Wizards has pre pretty much laid off everybody who had anything to do uh, yep. with that, including Mike Merles, who really was a guy who brought in 3.5 and he tried to fix 4.0 and he was a mainstay on 5.0. Uh, D and D, but he's gone, and uh, yeah, Hasbro and Wizards are really hurting. And Larian decided to bail, uh, so I don't Makes know. Sense. There's not going to be a Baldur's, Gort, Baldur's Gate four yeah, from Larian, should. but it will be could... from somebody else. Well, hmm. or they could take this momentum and they could make a sequel to um, yeah, Divinity um, uh, Sin. Or I was original... just thinking that Divinity, yeah. Uh, there was another that's what they one did I before they Baldur's did. Gate, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah Baldur's so. Gate three is basically the engine, the Divinity engine, but yes, more or less fifth edition rules hmm. with the AI. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there. And you know, it's the irony if you guys can see. Can you guys? Okay, cool. Yeah, so we can see it. I won't go into too much detail, but they're laying off. Basically, they're laying off. Um, uh thousands of employees i guess this is coming from hasbro uh down from hasbro who hasbro's Wizards. made a lot of dumb decisions over the last and, four or five years so yeah but yeah. they're but wizard of the coast continues to make money not just revenue like they're making good profit so it's kind of weird that they're doing that that's i mean that's kind of why this is news well, I mean, you know, otherwise the CEOs the economy... got to line their pockets. They can't, uh, they can't reinvest that in oh, the company. That would just make too much sense. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah but you, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they'll do more licensing. That's what they're going towards. Uh, well, again, they just they laid can... off so much talent, and that really yeah. is the crux. I mean, they lay off people like Mike Merles, and is like this guy. Even though I'm not a huge fan of his uh, his person personality or things i've heard about him but the guy he can definitely create you know role he knows role-playing games he knows tabletop role-playing he knows rules and uh okay who knows what well, corporate politics you, can go this could be a pivot into something else that we're just not seeing. the way i see it these uh these large companies these corporations are going to keep you know, misstepping and, you know, stepping basically into bear traps and they're going to keep losing all the people that actually make the stuff that makes the money. And it's going to lead to a, a renaissance of, of indie stuff. There's going yeah. to be a lot more, you know, double A games as opposed to triple A yeah. games because That's a lot great. of triple A games are absolute dog shit these days. Very few of them, you know, are, are any good. You know, yeah. they've got they they've got all a, a bunch of stuff that doesn't need to be in there, and it it can get back to small creative teams doing what they love that are actually passionate about this kind of thing and make something that people actually want. 
I mean, look at look at what's happening in indie comics right now. There is yeah. a, there is a indie comics boom right now. Yeah. People want good quality entertainment, and if these corporations aren't going to give it to us, then the indie scene is going to take up the banner and do it because that's that's what passionate people do. You know, they if yeah. if I'm not going to get the entertainment I want from from what's being put out there, I'm going to fucking make it myself. Right. That is that yep. is that is the indie <laughs> motto. DIY or well, die. Like the Ripperverse. Right. Well, Oh, yeah, well, yeah, like, the, like the mercenary guild. Mercenary guild. Why I did it. <laughs> Shatter my comments, yeah. baby. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, I got yeah, exactly. I, I got mean, tired of the bullshit, and I started to write. And I figured with writing, at least I got that escapism that the yeah. mainstream wasn't giving me. And that's my prescription to a lot of folks: is just open up a word document, and start writing something. Because there you go. The it's way more satisfying to create stuff. The, yeah, mm -hmm. the imagination. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, mainstream well, is not going to give you what you want, uh, and, and mm. it's going to be a long time, if ever. Uh, they are hardwired into their bullshit and corporatism, and just let them have it. Well, it's they're they're I, they're too big yeah. to pivot. They're too big to you know to change. You know, well, in, indies are small and nimble. We can we can pivot on a dime. Yeah, we're we way more flexible. Adapt. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, I want to highlight these two paragraphs because this is an important thing. This is what we talked about, I think, way back in episode one and even kind of earlier in this conversation is that D&D &D is big because of the brand. It, it got popular. It's a household name. Yep. You know, people, people like us, the nerds that are passionate about this, this IP, we're the ones who built this, but there's nothing... Um, there's nothing unique from an a intellectual property, a business standpoint of view. Uh, the, it was the open gaming license. I mean, that's what helped them build their popularity because exactly. they allowed all, a ton of other indie people to branch off of that. But there's nothing stopping people like Paizo and uh, the guy from Critical Role. What's the guy, William, that left... Uh, when they were making fifth edition to do like Shadow oh, Schwab, of the uh, when he Shadow did, uh, of the Demon Shadow Lord, of the Demon Lord, yeah. got this one here. Yeah, we were been talking yeah. a lot about playing a game of this uh, sometime yeah. soon. Just just different stuff like that. So it's, I, I mean, I just want to highlight that because they don't Wizards is going to shoot themselves in the foot. <laughs> I think that gave them a little bit of a wake up call, and so I think what they're trying to pivot to is not just they're trying to make a platform. I think that's why they're trying to push all the third party developers. They they don't they want to get rid of their talent and they want to just have I guess the public create stuff for them. But yeah, it's kind of like you mean kind of like Bethesda? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you see how well that works <laughs> in these video games companies, especially in the long term, these video games as service companies. Everyone wants to push a but the quality of the games are dog shit. They're awful. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and and you already see that in like uh, I mean I could name a couple of new releases uh, like the Suicide Squad was um, Rocksteady's big push for a service game. Well, I Even... think they kind of got pushed into making that a live service game, and they didn't want to. You can tell you can tell when developers right. don't want to make a game, you know, because there's there's no heart in it. And, right, uh, but, you know, yeah. Rocksteady was a, 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 a big-time developer, and now their future is in question just because of one fucking bad game. Right. Well, and what's worse is they made all of their best games as single-player games. Mm -hmm. So having a live service game that's always online and is co-op just doesn't make sense, even for that studio. So it's like the just like Hasbro mm -hmm. is top-down pushing wizards to make retarded ideas and decisions, you have these game publishers or big corporations like you're talking about push the developers i mean they see stuff like fortnite which say what you want about fortnite that was created out of passion i mean that yeah. was that was lightning initially was like, like, well, like right now well, actually in a bottle yeah hell divers is killing it right hell now. divers is great yeah so it's not like you can't make a game like that that's online you know that mm -hmm. could be single player or multiplayer but you still have but to have passion you have to have a core good idea for what you're trying to make um, absolutely something that's fun and enjoyable 
So to if, be fair, if, Fortnite uh, became what it is after copying PUBG. Let's let's be honest here. Yeah, yeah. PUBG. It was, oh, yeah. It was an online game, and people were just kind of playing it. It was a crafting game, and then they made it more like PUBG, oh, and that's when it that. really took off. It's worse than hmm. that. It was a single-player game. It was like yep. a castle-defending game. Yeah, because I played PUBG. I didn't never go. really played Fortnite, but uh, yeah, then Fortnite took that, and they probably perfected the, the genre because PUBG yep. had a and, lot of problems. A lot of and then problems. PUBG like just has kind of disappeared. Yeah. And so, but and then yeah, Fortnite blew up and they did all these. I don't know. I guess brand licensing deals. So they have like Marvel oh, skins yeah. and well, DC got, skins got, and all the Star got Wars action, skins. They got action figures. Yeah. 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 They have toys. And, and it's great. I mean, it's for kids, obviously. Merchandising. 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 <laughs> yeah, but but it's made for younger people it's it's goofy mm -hmm. like the cartoons are Fortnite the flamethrower the kids love this yeah one. <laughs> <laughs> right it, it you get a little glider it's great and the gameplay mm -hmm. is solid it's smooth but like dnd is weird because wizards to me is if you if you especially if you look at the new art style it's like everything they're trying to do for dnd is make it kitty yeah. you know it, it's not like you have a cool game that's somewhat complicated like william was saying where it actually enhances your you know it 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 adds to your brain activity it makes you more productive it makes you think about stuff uh and and forces you to be creative it's just like oh let's dumb everything down uh for the sake of virtue signaling i guess or whatever their reason is and then just have a bunch of third-party developers that I mean, what it's what kind of quality control are you gonna have it's off of that? It's all chasing the, the dollars. And, and when like, yeah, he but... knows the he knows the Gygaxes, and it wasn't corporate then, right? You know, uh, well, yeah, it's because they know, cared Tracy, about what they were doing. Tracy knew Arn, you knew Arneson, right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, so it, it's very strange that those guys died around the same time. Was it in the same year that they, those guys passed away? Um, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. It's yeah. really weird. We just, we just lost Jim Ward. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But... No, I, I don't, I don't, I don't appreciate the way, um, the people that are in charge of D&D &D now try to demonize the, the people that created it back in the day. You know, the old oh, yeah. stuff. Oh, the, the old stuff wouldn't pass our whatever the hell they call it now. Like, yeah. Good. I'm glad it wouldn't, because you people have no talent, you have no creativity, and you're basically just diluting the brand that was cool. So yeah, they are focused yeah, on the wrong things. Yep. Yeah. One hundred percent. The aspects yeah, of the game they should be yeah. paying attention to and refining and doing stuff with, they don't. It's all about nope. this, you know, hey, I have to incorporate this into my fantasy life. You know? Right. I have to be able Make to play about this me. character. Yeah, me, me, me. Yeah, it's gotta yeah, look that's, like that's me. really what it boils down to. Yeah, look, look what I did. Look at the sided. initiative that I created to add this thing. You know, something to to aggrandize myself rather than you know actually bring the uh, the the medium, the genre forward to do something. And the hell good with all those whole. old grognards. <laughs> yeah, right. right. The people who actually built everything, like you guys. Well, it's that's like. Um... One of my favorite campaigns was always Ravenloft, and that's something uh, Hickman yes. yeah. came up with, and, and they came up with Ravenloft, and they've uh, passed it down through it. So I got the fifth edition of Ravenloft, but now I apparently they've changed it because you can't have gypsies in it, for crying out loud. Somebody gets offended by gypsies, so they had to rewrite, because you come across gypsy, it's very much like a... You know, like Dracula, you know, <laughs> Victorian horror. That's how they wrote it. In fact, the reason why they wrote it is that they're going through a dungeon and they come across a vampire. And they're like, what the fuck is a vampire doing around with the oozes and slimes and shit? <laughs> and so they said, well, vampires should be in a castle. And, and so they wrote Ravenloft. And yeah, it became this whole... hit. It's, it's as big, probably bigger or as big as Forgotten Realms. Uh, and is passed down, but now they want to. They rewrote the Curse of Strahd yeah. with 
you know, no gypsies and we can't have this and we can't have that. Okay, okay. Yeah. So does that Come mean, on. I, mean I, mean, I can't enjoy, you know, uh, Dio's song Gypsy anymore? Is that is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> or even Jimi Hendrix referred to himself as a gypsy. Well, guess he what? They can't gypsy. control you in here, and this is a game of the imagination. So you add those That's gypsies right. wherever you want. That's right. <laughs> I'd like to point them all to the book of, uh, you know, Bram Stoker's Dracula, uh, right. because gypsies played heavily in that whole thing. Oh, you know, yeah. helping him move his his earth boxes and mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So it's like, and now you want to rip gypsies out of that whole world? That's yeah. that's pretty stupid. Oh, that's right. They yeah. have you guys seen the new uh, the Voyage of the Last Demeter? That movie it's is cool. dog I shit. I tried to watch it. I I think like, they didn't really show is them it bad? gypsies. Oh, it's terrible. I mean, it's I boring it as shit. And everybody movie. on that ship is dumb. Yeah, yeah that is true. There, they have to be pretty like, dumb. To, it's just to make it. okay. You've you've got a you've got a vampire on the ship. You realize the thing comes out at night. So instead of like opening the cargo hold and letting the sunlight get into where the thing is, you just <laughs> wait until the night to go after it. How fucking stupid do you have to be? <laughs> well, that was you're just literally like... letting the thing pick you off at night. Yeah. yeah, that was uh, at, like Feline and I watched 40. that movie together, and we were just like, <laughs> was, "This movie is stupid." I, I made it through dumb. fifteen minutes. That was in the third act Shut too. Up. It took mm -hmm. them forever to even figure <laughs> out, "Oh, what's what's going on? Like, why are mm -hmm. all of our crew disappearing? I don't understand." Well, they all need transfusions. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> there actually is kind of a part of that. Oh my god! Yeah, because yeah. they, they the... totally knew about transfusions back then. Yeah. Maybe it's just scurvy. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where are the lemons at? <laughs> I thought I thought the design was okay of Dracula. Well, the creature design the, was fine, but the the, the story going along with it was absolutely moronic. Yeah. Yeah, I guess they didn't really have much of a story to go off of. They basically well, they're, just took they're, like a chapter. Yeah, yeah they're picking it out of like a chapter out of the book, yeah. yeah you know, it's trying to expand it into a whole fucking film. I'm, I'm just, I'm done with prequels. So, Fuck off. Please. Yeah. <laughs> it. God. Oh man. I also it, that movie was dark. Did you guys oh, notice yeah. that? You can't see anything. Like you can't yeah. see stuff, and that maybe that's I weird to that. say for a horror movie, but if I can't see what the characters are, like it's one thing if it's dark and I can't see the creature. You know, you want to build mm. the suspense and and create right. like a. A, a atmosphere of fear uh mm -hmm. but i can't even see what the people are doing no most most the, shows nope the dialogue was really soft fuck, too. game of thrones was do. dark there were times in game of thrones it's like what the fuck's going on or somebody <laughs> yeah, somebody told me in the indiana jones 5 movie i'll never see it can't see what the fuck that going is accurate on. feline just, yeah. <laughs> yeah they don't yeah, know that's how amen to that's a they lot don't of know movies how to nowadays. Nowadays. That's a lot and of. And I hate it when I don't it's not bad, except when they're. I mean, when you have a fight scene, and you can't tell what the what right. what they're doing, I, I hate yep. that. Yeah. Why did Why did you bother to choreograph a fight scene that I can't freaking see? Right. Exactly. Because exactly. it's so poorly choreographed, they don't want you to see. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably. Yeah, Cross I don't know. What, what was Michael Bay's excuse in the Transformers movies and stuff? <laughs> I mean, they had the technology. He just wanted to get to the explosions. Them. That's all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah, all he cared about. So, so hey, let's blow shit up. There's, you just there's two bodies. See what's that's that's on. Michael Bay. There's that's Michael Bay. Stuff, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I could use a problem. Michael Bay movie right now. I, I never thought I'd say this. Yeah, you say you could use I a could Michael use Bay movie. Michael Bay in an Adam Sandler movie, and I'd fucking Oh no, no, do not wish. Do not wish Old for Bay. Adam Sandler. He, yeah, he was making movies on Netflix. They're awful. <laughs> he, he got a, like some kind of contract with Netflix. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's why he didn't do the uh, the fourth uh, what you call it the fourth uh, Hotel Transylvania movie. Uh, oh, really? Now it's fine. They're 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 oh, kids no. movies, but those movies are fun. I mean, Gendy Tartakovsky knows what he's doing when telling a story. You know yeah. the the visual comedy oh, yeah. in those movies, the pacing, the storytelling. Those movies are great. The fourth one was kind of meh. But the first three were were awesome, you know. Oh, they are um, doing Happy Gilmore too, so I guess. Oh, no, of course they are. really? Uh, yeah, they have to. Oh my god! Yeah. Can we do something original? 
Just, just no, one time. No, they have no originality oh, left in them. <laughs> like, Come on, please, three. just once. <laughs> There's one girl I was on a stream with. She went through 15 trailers for the next upcoming year. She goes, not one comedy, not one original idea. They're all reboots. Yep. They're all sequels. Something derivative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, even, even before that, Hollywood's just been doing adaptations. I didn't realize yeah. this. I, I started looking it up because I was wondering... When was the last year they didn't do a sequel or a prequel or something derivative or a reboot for like the third every like two years in a row or whatever? Yeah. And it's it's a while, like a long time. I bet it's nothing... been about a decade since they uh, did anything you know new and original. Yeah, that wasn't and a remake. Should should we get a right. sequel to the D and D movie? Yes or no? Uh, Wait, I, the the, liked, the new one that they I just liked, did? Which one? The, the most recent one. Did oh yeah. did everyone see the the new one? We I haven't seen it yet. It. it just came uh, out. Damn it, Come on, you had homework, man. <laughs> right. No, no, no. I told you it wasn't. But I, I have seen. Uh -huh. I have seen the first three, and and you guys haven't seen two of those. Yeah. You, okay. Yeah, but well, those well, don't well, count. Well, We're well, talking about the no. newest one. Yeah. No, the new they one, count. Yeah. They count. Well, we'll talk. We'll talk about it without spoiling it all for you. How about that? Yeah. So right. um, I think I, I, really I enjoyed the the new D and D movie. Yeah. I thought it, it kind of felt like you know sitting around the table with your friends goofing and you know playing a campaign. That's that's kind of the the impression that I got with it. You know. Yeah, I didn't hate it. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. definitely better than it. the last <laughs> attempt that they had. Uh, yeah, I felt it was. It was closer to. Do you guys? Uh, do you remember the World of Warcraft movie that they tried to make? Yeah, <laughs> like uh, I remember back. seeing a trailer for it. I never watched it. I, I oh, okay, yeah, I didn't watch it either because I don't. I don't know a lot of the Warcraft lore, but D, the D and D movie was going in that direction to me. Like there was a lot of stuff. They're like, oh hey, do you know that? Like it was just surface level. They're like, oh hey, remember Owl Bears? We put an Owl Bear mm -hmm. in this in this movie. But there's not, you don't really get a lot of interesting lore about them. You don't know, like, why can she can wild shape. So I thought that well, was. Well, I mean, does it really need to be explained in minute detail why she can wild no, shape? Just, I mean, mm -hmm. no, it doesn't have to be in minute detail. It's just it, it stuff She's like drew. that. It adds, yeah, but it's still to me like normie mm -hmm. key jangling stuff for D&D. Because sure. people know what an owlbear is. Like, why didn't they make, give her the ability to wild shape into something, I don't know, more interesting than an owlbear? That's what I'm hey, saying. Hey, Brian. Like, well, yeah. Now you know how, how us comic book, book nerds, nerds <laughs> feel. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, Let's not go there. Yeah. Right, right. So <laughs> I will say I will say setting that aside, yes, I I enjoyed it. I If they make another one, they should do a totally different party and a different adventure. Oh, how fantastic world. would that be? Because yeah, then that, that's D&D. That would be good. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Because yeah. that's D&D. Like, I don't need a sequel to this group. You told no. me their story. That's right. cool. They had a good ending. That's fine. Like, yep. like do Curse of Strahd or something. Oh, See, so you now for me, well, for me, back in the day, D&D &D movies were like a Ralph Bakshi's Wizards. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sword and fire, Sorcerer. Fire and Ice. Yeah, Sword and the Sorcerer. Uh, uh, Conan. Conan. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Yeah, that, yep. those were my D&D &D yep. movies. Fantasy movies. Crawl. Crawl. Yeah. Remember Crawl? Beastmaster. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Crawl was great, oh, man. I loved that movie. Love How good was Beastmaster? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Yep. Tanya yeah. Roberts. fucking fun. Yep. I had a couple of uh, all that shit, rats man. growing up that I named Koto and Poto. In fact, they... <laughs> they <laughs> awesome. Very cool. I, think it was either, I don't know which came first, Sword ferrets. and the Sorcerer or Conan, <laughs> but it was around 82. Those were the first rated R movies I ever got into. Yeah. Brother, so I saw those enough? in theaters. Yeah, yeah but I, I, they, I think they, they kept could... it kind of almost PG. I mean, they, they, it was PG 13, yeah. right? Yeah, no, there were yeah. titties. They, they kept it so, PG 13. Yeah. There were titties. Yeah. Well, Conan was rated R. We're Conan, talking about yeah. the D&D &D movie. Conan, 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 Conan was rated R. The second one, oh, yeah. uh, I actually watched a, a little, like, a, a web uh, essay or a, a video essay on Conan. Mm -hmm. They uh, they wanted to, uh, you know, kidify it more. They wanted people to be able yeah, to take their want... kids to the second Conan movie. So that's yeah. why it was goofier humor and, you know, less violence and uh, no titties. 
the worst costuming yep. ever. Worst costuming and special effects ever in a film, in my opinion. Conan the Destroyer. It's laughable. It's like a guy in a rubber suit. <laughs> His mouth doesn't move. It's fucking it's, hilarious. It's, it's been a long time. How about Red since... Sonia? Uh, oh, yeah. Red Sonia. They're about yep. to remake yeah. Red Sonia, yeah. Yeah, oh, they've been trying to remake Red Sony remake. for a long time. Yeah. Without titties, though, you can't have the male gaze. No, but they have. Yeah, hold on. I'll pull it up for you. <laughs> See, oh, I have Lord. a piece of Red Sonya art on my wall over here. Listen, Red Red Sonya chooses to wear a metal bikini because she's able to move in it, and she's badass enough to, you know, fucking handle anything that is, gets thrown at her. <laughs> yeah. no, you know, that's, that's the whole thing. This is the actress that they're getting to play Red Sonia. What? So, blah, blah. What? I mean, if it was like a rom-com and you had like her and Conan, you know, and then they just uh, met in like a coffee shop and she was like, oh, man, it's so weird that I met you here. You know, I could you see know, that. Like, but why not, know, why not have somebody off. that actually has know. a physical, you know, physical prowess? Yeah. Like, you know, hey, hey, maybe, maybe Gina Carano. You know, she's got the physical yeah, she, attributes. She's 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 exactly tough. She could right. probably swing a sword around. Sure. Yeah. You know, that like, could work. Seriously. Um, because you know? yeah. when they did the film, they did have Bridget Nielsen, who's like six oh, yeah. foot. And, yeah, and, she and she was badass yeah. in that flick, too. Yeah. You know, she yeah. had the physicality for the role. You know, somebody that yeah. could actually be a rival to Conan. And that's how she was she was made up in the, the Marvel comics. She was yeah, granted the original Bill. Robert E. Howard. Uh, she was more of like what 14th century, uh, like flintlock gunslinger type. Uh, hmm. And then the the ver version that we know, the sword and sorcery version, kind of came from the uh, the 70s Marvel comics. Um, yeah, yeah. Just put a so, red yeah. wig on um, Gina Carano. There you go. Yeah. Seriously. Um, here yeah, woke is, red uh, Sonya won't work. Just call her something else. I agree, Matt. I agree. You know, and that's yikes. honestly that's the way I feel about most of these these reboots and remakes. Is like, you know, make something else, make something new, call it something else. But you don't want to make something new, or you don't want to call it something else right. because it's, it's you lazy. want that name recognition. You want yeah. people's nostalgia, like the member berries. They want to jangle the member berries in front of people and you know try to get people to come in because of the name and then they're going to substitute it with something else that has absolutely nothing to do with the original right. property it's yeah. a bait right but, but we're not stupid yep. we know now like the only people who are going to see those movies are the like the nerdrotic youtubers that yeah film themselves like, in an empty theater you know, and like i, I really wish the they'd <laughs> stop <laughs> they, i mean i realize they're the like, they're the most dime like that people. but they, they come out with the Ghostbusters yeah, but... movie, and from what I understand, it absolutely sucked. And I didn't care for the previous one with the Ghostbusters Stranger Things. Uh, oh, I I liked uh, I liked the 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 last one. It was fun. Well, this yeah. one this one is more disjointed with bad writing and and cameos. Have you seen it? And and, and you know it's just not something i would want to see and again they're out of ideas they don't know what the fuck they're doing they can't write well everything has to be a a, a sequel yeah. a remake or a reboot and um you know i'm willing to give the new ghostbusters a chance uh because i liked i liked the last one uh i thought it was I it didn't was care fun for it but i like the yeah, last I didn't one even as well. see it because i yeah. knew they're just gonna reboot it again why well, does apparently the, uh, the swapped out for... yeah well, I mean, the, the, the original Ghostbusters are getting old. I mean, the, the original guys, they're, they're too old. Well, to I mean, do this those stuff. are the guys, though. And, and here's the thing the reason why it landed is that those guys were uh, geniuses when it came to comedy, when it came to, mm -hmm. you know, comedy Delivery. troupe, uh, sketch comedy and stuff. You had guys from SNL, you had guys from SCTV. They were brilliant mm -hmm. at what they did. They worked, and together. some of them worked, and, and Harold it just Remus. melded. Yeah, Harold Ramis, I was going to say, brilliant yep. writer. Just, absolutely. Just freaking awesome writer. Took he the words right out of my mouth, man. He, yeah, he absolutely. He wrote the script that Aykroyd had. Aykroyd has it because Dan Aykroyd actually comes from a ghost busting lineage. Like his mm -hmm. parents, his grandparents in the, I don't know, the 1800s were, they were like 
haunted house and exorcist type people oh, yeah. and he he comes from a background of actual occult and knowing all these old gods and things like that he, that's wow. and so he wrote it very straightforward and harold ramus yep. uh gave it kind of a lilt and gave it kind of a comedy and streamlined it because technically john belushi was supposed to play harold ramus's role and eddie murphy was supposed to be vankman that was the original team hmm. yeah. and john belushi died and eddie murphy went on to do uh beverly hills cop yeah yeah, yeah that's funny and yeah so uh, uh ramus added a lot to it and made it the comedy that it was it and uh, ramus is on. actually the one that wrote the script the original script for frozen empire this was this was the uh the plan from the beginning they were they were supposed to be passing the torch with uh with this script in frozen empire and it got mm. got reworked to be in the movie that they release now so this was always uh, apparently always the plan uh they sure just never was. got around to making <laughs> you know the the third and the fourth movie it was always the plan after the 2016 version yeah. Well, they listen. The 2016 version uh, is, you know, been memory hold. Nobody wants right. to remember that. And if you look at the right. special remember. effects in that movie, I remember. <laughs> I'll yeah. never forget. I'll well, never if you look at the special forget. effects in that movie, the the special effects are awful compared to the original films. Yeah. Yeah, you know, right. and this is this is what I mean when they when I say that they need to use more practical effects because the practical effects they used in the original films hold up better. 30 years later than the CGI from, you know, less yeah. than a decade ago. Yeah. It's, oh, that, yeah. That, yeah. It's, I it's totally terrible. agree. Totally agree. I, I just watched yeah. a, a video. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Corridor Crew at all uh, on YouTube, but they're a visual effects group. And they talked about this specific thing of the, the old practical effects mm -hmm. for Ghostbusters versus the, the newer two movies. And yeah. compared them and how they basically went back and used the same techniques as they used oh, that's back fine. then to keep things consistent. Good. Right. Yeah. And those good all those movies were made on a lower budget too. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, they had to be creative yeah, back then. They had to think yeah. about how they were going to make things work. They couldn't rely yeah. on oh, we'll just put it on a blue screen and CGI the shit in later. Yeah. You know? And we'll other fix people's it money. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, and they couldn't rely yeah. on other people's money. Like these are small studios with a handful mm -hmm. of people. Well, and they had to and, deliver as well. You know, they yeah. they couldn't just you know keep churning you know. out bomb after bomb after bomb and expect to keep their job. Right. You know. Yeah. You used yeah, like to actually these... have to be good at what you did in order to keep your job. Yep. Right. So, like so all these if you, people, if you um... launched a turd, <laughs> then that might be right. the end of you. And, and, and it, now, yeah. nowadays, if you launch a turd. You fail upwards. Hey, we'll make you. It reminds me of what Ray Stance said. He was like, uh, I've been in the private sector. They expect results. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Only when working for the government can you just keep fucking up and uh, continue to keep well, your job. <laughs> I mean, and make more money every time. Right? Right. I mean, these corporations basically are the government now. I mean, I don't I mean, want to go too deep into this, but with all the yeah. ESG money and and Vanguard and yeah. BlackRock well, and stuff, it's yeah. it's it's cronyism, a lot of cronyism. So all the more reason why we need uh, independent studios to crop up and give people actual entertainment to yeah. uh, take away all of the uh, the audience that's that's going to buy the the swell. Like, yeah, we'll, you, if we'll you just create the new stories. Exactly. You know, if you if you have the option to eat a uh, a high quality gourmet meal or you can eat, you know, shit on a plate, which one are you going to choose? Mm -hmm. It yeah. seems like a simple simple choice, right? So yeah. as long as we offer people a better choice, a higher quality product, they're going to go for that. Right. But it's, it's just a matter be... of getting the word out there. Yep. Right. But it just can't be, hey, here's an alternative that's not the hashtag woke version of this. I actually think it would be cool if they came out with a new Red Sonia movie and just called it Woke Red Sonia. Like, that would be funny. <laughs> that would be actually, actually leaned like into it. You know. Yeah. They, well, just call it something else. Stop yeah. using these names that you don't have any That's, ties to. Well, yeah, but they just, well, it's like you said, they just have the brand name. So it's recognizable. Well, they don't care about the lore. 
I mean, they just don't like, care about it at all. Yeah, yeah just like just, Wizards you know, of the Coast, they don't care about the fucking lore. They don't care about what people like Tracy right. set up and, and Gygax and and Arneson. Yeah. They don't give a shit. Fuck those. But they guys. have never acknowledged I mean, my presence. Literally, fuck those. Right. Guys. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like they're so they're disrespectful, and they have to do stupid shit like this to even make money. So it's kind of ironic that they have to do all like they have to turn D and D into a third party platform with awful quality control in their eyes to make money, and then they're just gonna lose a bunch of money because they don't See, understand what the, makes it good in the, the first place. To Lord of the Rings, we're gonna make Aragorn black. What? That could have yeah, been a gold mine, that's... dude. Could have been a gold mine, Lord of the Rings cards. But instead, you made everybody mm -hmm. black and called oh. everybody a bigot who didn't like it. Good for yeah. you. I mean, it still, it still made a shitload of money because they were doing the One Ring. I oh I was, yeah, I was following. I was following that set release. It made a lot of money. I mean, the problem is now it's oversaturated, so they're not curating yep. like, oh, let's do Lord of the Rings. They're like, let's do Lord of the Rings and Fallout and Jurassic World or Park or whichever version they ripped off. And then they're doing a million different oh, Warhammer 40k. Like they're doing a million different tie-ins, so it's, yeah. it doesn't mean it sounds meaningful. That's, That's because they have no original ideas, and they've got to use well-known yeah. brands to try to keep pushing their own brand. And that's why everything is is a crossover. It's diluted. It's you know mashups. It, you know, and because that's that's what people yeah, say. Oh, this is recognizable. Out. Nobody wants to take a chance and make anything new to become recognizable because they don't want to put the work in. It takes a lot of work to make something recognizable. It takes a lot of work to get that recognition, and people want yeah. to just shortcut all that work. Of course, you know, they don't yeah. want to put the work in but, to create something new that will last. Right. Well, that's why I think it's so interesting getting to talk to Tracy. This kind of comes full circle because we started this show with, you know, what was it like back in the day? What was it like mm -hmm. being there when it was just you and Gary and like, I don't know, a handful of people, you know, not even, yep. an, you said not even an office. Yep. They didn't even have the office yet. I mean, think about all the creative energy that goes into that process. Think about all the cool stuff that you create. Um, I mean, that's what we're trying to do today to create new stories that people want, not yeah. just rehashed IPs. I mean, it, it, I hate to say it, but, you know, all that stuff is basically dead. Like we can enjoy it for what it was, but it's it's never going to be the same. No. So we have to create mm -hmm. new stories and you know new characters Absolutely. and things people will love. But it's just interesting because the people, I mean, it's it's interesting in a in like a really bittersweet kind of way because the people who are the stewards of these things a lot of them straight up hate the things that they're in charge of yep they oh like, yeah they openly and you can mock, tell not fans. yeah they openly mock people like us that are the actual fans of this game and yeah. playing it for decades like they don't like it it's just a job to them so they they're they're anti they're anti-passionate they're not even they're probably not even capable of having a good creative idea um, well, the reason why they're so. they're going after these things, the reason why people want to work for Marvel in DC and want to work on D and D and stuff like that, it's a recognizable brand IP. And mm -hmm. oh, look, I did a story for Marvel. I did a story for you know Wizards of the Coast, a D and D thing. Now give me a Netflix deal. I have yeah, this they... own I, my own idea now. You know, I've you know it's it's something to put on a CV. It's a, it's something to pat out their resume Absolutely. rather than actually create something that they're passionate about. Right. Yeah, you it's know? a status. That, symbol. That's the problem. It, it is a status it's, it's symbol. A status exactly. symbol. And that used to be they're the wearing it game. like a purse. Yeah, you know, it used to be the end game. If you worked at Marvel or DC, that was your end game. That was yep. your career. Yeah, you, know, like you were that, working that towards was, that. You were the major leagues now. Hey guys, give yeah. me just a sec. I'm gonna uh, get off here for just a sec. Yeah, no worries. Okay, okay. we're just gonna keep going on. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Resume padding, like oh, yeah, re resume like padding, exactly, feline. <clears throat> yeah, I'll, I'll and spot like that. that's a good people, that's a good term. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's absolutely what they're doing too. One hundred percent. Because it's not and like they're yeah. It, people, you know, people are people are starting to notice. You know, the the people that are passionate about this stuff, like the whole reason why the MCU was able to take off the way it was is because, you know, people like me and, and you guys that, that loved comics, you know, you told your normie friends to go watch this stuff because it was cool. You know, they were doing a good job with these characters. And as the, uh, the MCU wore on, 
You know, they stopped having any kind of comic writers work on this stuff. They stopped having any kind of people that knew these characters working on them in favor of their Hollywood writers. And notice that the movies, as they went on, became absolute shit. They were right, they were right. less likable. They were not fun. They all became formulaic and stupid. But that's the thing. They tried to boil it down to a Hollywood formula that was just mm -hmm. easily replicatable and just chuck it out. Yep. Yeah, they're, Let and they're doing... eat. keep it going. <laughs> right. Yep. Well, yeah, they're doing the wrong things to make money. Yeah. So, like let's and... let's just do this so it makes the most amount of money. Even though the reason it made money in the first, like they don't understand fundamentally why a thing becomes popular. Well, it's the, it's the name, it's the IP, right? You know, it's Star Wars, it's it's you know Marvel. <laughs> Just because it has that name on there, you'll buy it, right? Because you know you nerds are dumb. No, we're not actually. Uh, yeah, we they want we require them. quality. <laughs> Right, and exactly, exactly. we are starting to notice that you're making dog shit, and we're telling our normie friends to not watch this shit because it's dog shit. So the same yep. reason why it was successful to start with is the same reason why it's going to fail now, because you're not taking care of your core audience. Yeah, and that will and it's always already, be the end. It's already stale. It's already stagnant. A lot of these properties, it's, they're not cool anymore. Like, it's even you, people, even in Hollywood, they see, they're starting to see the winds change. Yep. Is that the right phrase? Yeah. I mean, look at look uh, at Madam Web. That's you know? what I was just about to say. Yeah. So the even the people who would chill for this shit like a month ago are now now it's now it's acceptable to make fun of it because that yep. one actress is making fun of it because she got screwed on her deal or whatever she was not happy about oh, yeah. her paycheck or whatever it was. She you know, was, her agent uh, over that movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She thought she was going to yeah. be part of the MCU uh, and then found out that she was part of Sony's little Sony. Marvel thing. And she's like, oh, fuck. Right. But <laughs> that that's a perfect example of how it's just a status yep. symbol. She, I don't sure. want to say she's dumb, but she was too dumb to even know the difference between well, she didn't Sony do her own research. Right. Yep. But these people have right. no fucking idea what they're even involved in. Yeah, like they they have absolutely no Look, care. They just the want to take an IP so. and make it their own playground. They don't give a shit. They don't care yes. if it's Halo or yeah, D and D exactly. or fucking. You Wild can they you don't care, and you can tell they don't love the comics anyway because yes. the the characters that they pick to make movies of, you know, leaves me scratching my head. It's like, did we really <laughs> need an? Did we really need the Eternals? Uh, no, no. Probably one of the most super boring MCU movies ever. Um, one of the most taking super a, boring uh, comic books ever, too. I mean, like the original you know, comic they, was pretty boring. To be uh, even think, to be fair, Webb, like you cannot except have for a Jack Madame Kirby. Webb, except for Jack can, Kirby, exactly. You cannot have a Madam Web comic without Spider Man. Right? You can't right, Luke? You can't. Or Venom. I, yeah, no. You, you or Venom. Her, yeah. Can't have a Madam Web. Yeah, at all. Well, see, and, and the funny thing is, is I actually enjoyed Morbius. the first Venom movie a lot more yeah. than I expected to, but that's because I went into Venom expecting it to be absolutely terrible. Yeah. You know? And, a lot of you know, did, it surprised yeah. me. You know? You and then the second one... The second yeah, I had one really lowered that expectations. Bad. The second and one the, was that bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, although I will say, having uh, having uh, uh, Woody Harrelson as Cletus Cassidy was was kind of it was a bit of on the nose casting, but I you know I liked him as Cletus. If he yeah. had been younger, it would have been perfect. Yeah. But let yeah. me let me take a poll because I'm I'm interested. What is your favorite MCU movie? What do you think was the best? Uh, Captain America: Winter Soldier. <laughs> Oh, that's wild. That's mine too. Okay. Yeah, that's mine too. Uh, yeah, yep. I love it. Dude, it was a good spy thriller. Is, the original Captain, was. the first Captain America one was uh, very. Uh, it hit. It hit all the right emotional chords for me. You know, with yeah. Steve Rogers growing sure. up and getting beat up all the time, and then getting into the. But Winter Soldier, man, that story was. That was story strong, was great. Yeah. Yeah, was and then I compare it against right, crap like Wakanda Forever. Story. Okay, no, well, oh yeah, the original Iron Frank, Man was great. Frank, what's your uh, what's your what's your favorite MCU movie? I, no, I, I've got to agree. As far as hitting the the spy thriller action combo, uh, was perfect for Winter Soldier. I, mm -hmm. It really was. And I, I also okay. agree that the like I said the 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 first Captain America, the that's probably my favorite MCU origin. Yeah, it's hugely underrated. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah. Was well, made by the same dude the that did the Rocketeer. That's why the 1940s felt so authentic. He knew how to capture yeah. that feel. You oh, know, yeah. Rocketeer is oh, another one of my Rocketeer. fucking favorite that films. So I good. love that. I movie. love Rocketeer. Right. So oh yeah. yeah. Yep. So good. Uh, rest, rest in peace to uh, Dale or Dave. Oh, Dave Stevens. Dave, yeah, Dave Stevens. Yeah. You know my favorite. Amazing. He creator. died like last year, I think. Did you my guys read It's probably going to be very mainstream. I mean, it's a toss up between Iron Man and Avengers, and I'm going to go with Avengers because I think Joss Whedon yeah, brought those characters almost... together so well. There yeah. was the right amount of humor, the right amount of dread, the right amount. Everybody had their shining sure. moment. Uh, and yeah, just the way he brought, even bright bringing in the Hulk the way he did. Uh, I, you know. I think the Avengers, but Iron Man is a close second for me. Oh yeah, the first Iron Man movie is great. Like, uh, yeah. and and I agree with the the about the first Captain America movie. You know, uh, Hugo Weaving as uh, as the so Red good. Skull. You know, just a great oh, yeah. casting job. Mm-hmm. You know, he chews um, the scenery. Yeah, the first Iron Man. Flip. <laughs> oh yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. And it, it makes yeah. me sad that he had such a bad time working on that film because I would have loved to have seen him come back as the Red Skull in another movie. Yeah. You know, because oh, he was yeah. just—he was great as that character. You know, he, he had a lot of had a lot of gravitas as as, as the skull. Yeah. Wait, who did they get to do the Red Skull in um, Infinity War? Just some random dude. The the oh, nobody guy. nobody that you know. Like they just oh, okay. had him had somebody that sounded kind of like him. Oh, you know? yeah. Because I it actually looked cool. it up after that. I it would have been cool to find out that. Uh, the skull was behind all the Hydra stuff in the Winter Soldier movie. Right. They yeah. They could they have had done it right that. there. <laughs> you know, like keep it a secret <laughs> until the very end. Like, ah, oh, this is the guy who's in charge of it all. Oh, yeah. Well, like three I, minute, like, yeah. end reveals. That would have been yeah. Great. Yep. Yeah. That aw shit moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then tie that would tie it back to the, the first <laughs> film. You know, it would have been would have been awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would have yeah. been a little trilogy. Almost. Yeah. How about yours, Brian? Well, I actually what, have what's to your bail. MCU? Um, I really like the original Iron Man movie. It's I mean, good. set up the whole thing. Yeah. I liked Infinity yeah. War because it was the culmination of it was the perfect end storybook ending to the MCU, and nothing came out after Infinity War. That's what I'll yeah, say. I kind of agree. <laughs> Ever. The end. Uh-huh. Endgame was a bit more prophetic than they wanted it to be, huh? But this yeah. is interesting because none of those are my are even in the they're not my favorite comic book movies. None of those. The Crow is my favorite even, comic book even, movie ever. Yeah, exactly. Crow's the really Crow good, yeah. and Blade mm-hmm. and maybe Sin City and Spider Man Two. And dark, mm-hmm. like those are my favorite. And it's funny because I got into an argument with an SJW. It's fucking hilarious. And they said, "Well, the crow was a white guy," and I said, "He's fucking Bruce Lee's son." And she mm-hmm. goes, "Well, who the fuck is Bruce Lee?" <laughs> oh no. my god! Uh, <laughs> no, what? you, you just be kidding? No. Uh, oh my god! No you lose it, life. <laughs> They had no yeah, idea yeah, that Brandon yeah. Lee was Bruce Lee's son because I guess his anyway it was just ridiculous. What t- trying to argue? I agree, with Fila. <laughs> yeah, I still have a special place in my heart for the 1989 Michael Keaton Batman. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh yeah, too. That, was, that was good. Best Batmobile watch... design ever. And, oh and yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I graduated high school and I had a friend who worked at the movie theater century movies and i i saw that like three times i saw it before it they we, it, they actually premiered it and then i saw it like two more times after that god that was the best summer for movies you had indiana jones you had uh fucking lethal weapon 2 you had uh fuck, roadhouse who they wish they just remade ridiculously <laughs> you had uhf with weirdo yankovic i, I mean, love that, that movie like, that was yeah. a great summer for movies, man. Oh, let me tell you, I was at the first showing of, of Batman, and I kid you not, at the end of that movie, the whole audience like stood up and applauded. Yeah. I've never I, bet. I never yeah. saw that happen. 
<laughs> yeah, everybody was like, yeah. Well, uh, oh, Sam yeah. Hamm wrote that movie, and he he understood the characters. You know, he he understood. He he was a fan of the characters first of all, and he understood the characters. You know, he knew he knew how to bring them to the screen, Un adapt them. Unlike today. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> yeah. They don't. They don't understand at all. Uh, that's because they're again going back to this. They're not fans. You know, and you know the the people that write the MCU movies. Oh well, we don't read the comics, and we don't we don't you know we don't look into anything. We don't research <laughs> no, this. Don't. We're just gonna do our own thing with it. Then why the fuck are you calling it this thing that has this mm -hmm. this weight, this this prestige to it? Oh, because you want to co-opt it. That's why. Yeah. You know the. Yeah. The, the mask is off. We can we, we all see this is the reason why they keep using these these names, these brand names, these titles, because they just want to take that prestige. They want to take that notoriety and they want to staple it onto their, you know, poorly written crap. Well, and you know what this means, don't you? What? We're just going to have to kick their asses. That's right. right. <laughs> Come up with creative funny. stuff that just blows their doors off, makes them look stupid. Exactly. That's what I tried to do. And then gatekeep them the fuck away from our shit. Yeah. <laughs> no entry into the clubhouse. No, That's right. Okay. You know, you can, Unless you you can come like hang out if you group. actually are genuinely interested. If you're here to just, you know, further your own agenda, fuck off. I mean, yeah. if, they're, if they're genuinely interested, they can buy the book. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Yep. It's, it's time. I agree, Feline. It's time. It's time to make, make good shit, you know, make something new. You Buy reminded it, me of a Marvel it. book that had the Hobgoblin on the cover saying, Steal this book! <laughs> yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Steal this comic yeah. book! <laughs> Hobgoblin I wonder how many great, kids man. did. Probably a lot. Buy and learn it, and don't <laughs> yeah. tell me how to write my shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Alright, gentlemen, I yeah. gotta hop off. Fair enough. enough. Thanks for hanging out, man. Thanks for hanging Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Thanks, for, Thanks out. for having me, you're Tracy. It's an absolute pleasure to, to pick it. your brain and, and meet you. Uh, Any anytime, anytime, guys. I'm um, I'm honored to be here with you guys. Yeah, thank oh, you yeah. for coming. Anytime open. you want me to come on, just give me a holler. I'll come on. Yeah, I, I okay. hope to talk to you again. I, uh, I started right. following you on Twitter. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I uh, you know, obviously go by Death Metal Hero, but yeah, I just started following you on Twitter. Um, I do a, a show called uh, Topicless every every Tuesday night at nine fifteen with my buddy Jason, and we we hang out, we talk, you know, all kinds of stuff, and we draw. You know, it's a draw stream. You know, people turn oh, their cameras cool. on, and we we draw on camera and talk. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Take it easy, Frank. Have a good part, one. Yeah, yeah take it easy, Frank. Thanks. Yeah. Why don't, why don't we all Have do our day. our closing closing statements and yeah, talk about. Talk about where we can find each other. All right. Because uh, Luke, right. Luke just went through. Luke just yeah, went through. Yeah, I mean, his. find me at Death Metal Hero Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Also, you know, I've got a website, deathmetalhero.com. You can find all of my links there. Also, merch and, uh, you know, uh, yeah. time, uh, time lapse videos of me doing artwork. Uh, so, yeah, you know, check out my YouTube. Uh, I've got uh, got videos up there. I do live streams uh, all the time. I, I talk to independent creators, promote books and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, hit me up. I also do a, an amazing show with uh, my lady, uh, Flying Feline. We do the happy hour hangout and we do trivia and we, uh, we, we talk about, you know, pop culture and stuff. We promote books on there as well. So uh, feel free to come uh, come hang out with us there as well. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, oh, man. yeah and show some of the – so – Tracy, uh, Luke's yes. my uh, pencil and inker, and Frank's my colorist for my book called Mercenary Guild. Okay. Uh, sh Luke, show some of them uh, if, if you have. Yeah, them show shady. show the goods. Alrighty. Uh, yeah, this is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Once again, this is uh, this is Nicole, the Elven Sorceress, for uh, this mm -hmm. exclusive trading card. I like that. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is ink wash in the background. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, you, you will be able to get this card on the campaign. Uh, this will be an exclusive card if you sign up at the mercenary guild dot com. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, this the, and this is uh, this is Bane Spectre. This is uh, the promo poster that we uh, that I made up for the campaign. Uh, both of these original pieces of artwork will be all available on the campaign. But yeah, uh, yeah. and could this could is... be a variant cover. Could be. Yes. Could be a variant cover as well. Uh, yes, it's, uh, it's very yeah. likely. 
You know, I know people wanted to wanted as a poster. Uh, you know, because we did yeah, like the whole uh, the st that. stressed uh, paper in the background, make it look like an old wanted poster. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, uh, this is what the book is going to look like on the inside as well, guys. You know, uh, this is this is just how I draw. So this is this is what it will look like in the book as well. So no Coolness. no bait and switch. Yeah, man. <laughs> So we're we're having fun with this book. I think people are really going to enjoy it. You know, leaning into the whole uh, savage sort of Conan, black and white. At least as far as my artwork goes. Yes, we have a colorist, but my uh, my line work is you know kind of leaning towards old savage sort of Conan type stuff. And I don't know if you're familiar with Poison Elves, Drew Hayes. Uh, it was an independent black and white uh, dark fantasy book from the '90s, put out by Sirius Entertainment. Um, hmm. So there's there's a lot of that influence as well. And you know. Just all, all the old fantasy stuff, you know. Just look up black Poison and white Elves. comics. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a great book. So I'm gonna yeah, show man. I'm gonna show a page. From Go the for book. it. That's one of my favorite pages. Page eleven. Um, <laughs> I'm really proud of page eleven. <laughs> I was Dude, thinking. Um, page eleven is kick ass, man. Yeah, Thanks, well, I was man. thinking. Uh, uh, let me go up the final or ten. What's the castle? Castle is eleven. It is eleven. Okay. Yeah, we're it's all 11. thinking eleven then. Okay, that's cool. This castle um, goes to eleven. Yeah. <laughs> let me. This castle goes to eleven. Uh, <laughs> Don't look at it. Don't even point at it. <laughs> so this is this is poison elves. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, man. Sort of looks like manga. Uh, a little bit. This was this was before the the big manga boom. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, this is Drew Hayes. This is one of my favorite uh, panels that he he did in the book. Mm. Yeah, man. Um, I I think you might you might dig this one. They actually are getting ready to put out a uh, an omnibus edition of this book. Uh, I ordered it off of Kickstarter, and uh, I can't wait to get it. Um, but yeah, totally totally worth checking out. You know. He's got his own his own uh, fantasy lore. Can you can you guys see this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I yeah. Blow it up. You, yeah. It's not blown up, but. Oh, here. Let me. Yeah, you might need might need to zoom in. There we go. Although you're going to be this. limited by the, uh, you know the. Um, this guy. Aspect ratio of your monitor. I'll just go slow. The castle, you got. Malchus and Bane, two of the main characters, arriving at the the ruined fort. Yeah, Mac the mercenary Malchus guild is a headquarters. Wolf. Yeah. yeah, all the spikes. There's a story Pretty behind sweet. that, but you gotta read the comic. That's right. Uh, what else? What else? This is pretty sweet. These goblin guys terrorizing the the town. Mm. Look at that. That's awesome. That's some of Frank's colors oh, yeah. and Luke's inks. And, uh, looks good. It's yeah, all hand-drawn, right. folks. No 3D it. assets. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Um, fucking around, man. Cool. Yeah. Um, we're, um, so we, we showed the, the link to Tracy stuff, right? Actually, Tracy, yeah, I, uh, I dropped the the link to his uh, his store as well as uh, as uh, Twitter and uh, uh, the uh, author's page on uh, on Amazon as well. Very right. cool, thank you. Absolutely. And you can connect with me on X uh, at Tracy Lesh, and you can connect with me on Facebook uh, again, Tracy dot Lesh. And that's nice. my page is public, so you can anybody can drop by. You don't necessarily have to be on my friends list to talk to me. And then you can you can just go to Tracy's house. That's right. You watch him work. <laughs> cool. right. do you sure. Have an arcade like Jimmy. No Jimmy do, you, do you have an arcade like no, Jimmy? No, don't Reyes? do that. <laughs> don't don't show up to people's houses, people uninvited. <laughs> That's rude. that is that is true. Yeah, that's that's not it's very rude. That's not a good thing. I don't have an arcade, but I do have a bunch of uh, minis, um, the NES mini, the Super NES mini, and the Genesis oh, mini. Nice. And those yeah. suckers are just like loaded. 
with with all nice. the games. Dude, I'll play Excite Bike mm -hmm. with you any day. There you go. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I remember man. playing that. Classic. Hell yeah. Track and field. Classic games, man. My a way, again, out. there's a reason why they keep re-releasing them. Track and them. field where yep. you rub the spoon over the fucking <laughs> A and B switch. Yeah, and you had okay. to mash those buttons to make your guy yeah. run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get remember the uh, the, the nest pad that they uh, that they you know had where did? you, you know would what we have did to actually 80s? run on it to push the buttons. Mm. You know what track and field? What we did in the eighties. Uh, with the stand-up arcade, we took our Velcro wallets out because we all had Velcro wallets, and we rubbed them across the fucking uh, across <laughs> the uh, yeah, we rubbed them across the buttons, and then hit that white button up top to you know, to <laughs> right? Throw the javelin that's, or jump. That's one way to do it. Yeah, but on the NES, you use a spoon. You take a spoon. <laughs> And you rub it across. Just rock it the back and <laughs> forth on the buttons. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You could rock it back and forth. That's cool. That's the that's the technique right there. Contra was my jam. Oh, oh dude, the original Contra, Contra yeah. was great. Up up, up, down, up down, 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 left, right, left, right, 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 right. B A B A select start. <laughs> oh my god. Yep. Hey, look, I got ninety nine guys. <laughs> that's right. Me and my dad beat that game because we had the code. Yep. Mm hmm. Nice. And it worked in the sequel too, but it didn't work in the third one. Yeah, it just gave me flashbacks to my my uh, Game Shark. Oh, Game Shark! <laughs> Had all Put the in the code. Codes. Yep, yeah. Game Genie. Game yeah. Genie. I had Game Genies for all the systems. Yeah, man. Ah, uh, video games used to be a lot of fun. They're still fun. They're still fun-ish. Yeah, -ish. yeah, they, what, fun. yeah. yeah. They were, they were more about the uh, the the game mechanics back then, though, and like the the gameplay loop as opposed to oh, look at all these flashy graphics we have now. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're more worried about the flashy graphics rather than the story and the gameplay mechanics. You know, the gameplay loop. You know, you can still uh, and that's play I think Galaga. what's missing. You can still play Galaga and that's have true. A still time. play them. Tempest, yeah. If you line uh, saying Tempest in the chat, there, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't see Frank games. dropped off. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't get to say goodbye. Need to, to take off. Yeah, um, to, let's bounce. see. All right. Uh, go yeah, to I'm me. gonna. Oh yeah, go ahead. All right, more three five seven on X, as you kids call it, or what we used to call it, Twitter. And then <laughs> the Twitter Twix. That that's gonna be a <laughs> thing. Yeah, and then uh, check out themercenaryguild.com and uh, sign up for the email list. It doesn't cost you a penny, but if you sign up for that list and back the book, you get that free trading card that Luke uh, showed earlier, and uh, we will keep you updated. Uh, we were, we are moving along. We got some covers on the way, and we got uh, about eleven pages in inks and and colors and uh yep. it's gonna be a 76 page book so it's gonna take a little time but uh it doesn't cost you anything to get on the email list folks and uh, that's right you know it's gonna be a great book if you're a fantasy fan or a fan of dungeon dragons and and things like that and mm -hmm. quests uh, MMO quests or good anything old, like good that. Good old quest. This definitely, this mm -hmm. definitely will uh, scratch that itch. And magic. Very cool. And, and necromancy. That's right. There's <laughs> necromancy. There's magic. There's, yeah. there's walking wolves. There's swords. Who's Necro Nancy? <laughs> <laughs> Few people. Hmm. Not just one. <laughs> and while you're uh, while you're waiting on the mercenary guild. Why don't you uh, hop over to our shop on the website and check out? Oh man, Hardly Heroes! Look, the next oh, issue yeah. is almost out too. Oh man, issue nine. Go ahead, go ahead and yeah. order right now. Or okay, if you want to pick up a good. limited copy of Tracy's right. cover for a quest con that we did, you can grab that here. Um, you know, do you guys still have any copies of uh, of the variant cover that I did? I did a I did a saucy cover for him. Uh, yeah, we do. I we even have, have some. Cover. 
some uh, spicy covers if you want to get that yeah. that one from me. Hey now. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, we've got we've got them in the if you just go to like the Hardly Heroes comic. So if you go to Hardly Heroes and then you I'm show, I'm showing this right. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, 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 we can still see it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we uh, see it. You haven't boomered it yet. All right, sweet. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that was so close. So you go to issue seven B. You get a trade or virgin. You go signed, yes or no, and then boom. Look at that sweet, there it is. sweet loot cover with That's little right. Salazar popping out. Salazar's very <laughs> so, happy at what he's seeing. Yeah, it's uh. That's pretty sweet. Nice cozy by the fire. Her. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you get all the back issues. Back in the day. You know? Right? <laughs> we still uh, we still have some of the volumes available. We actually sold out of Tracy. Yeah, it's kind of like some cover. of your old D&D so. artwork. Yeah. <laughs> did you say yeah. you sold out of my volume? Yeah, your cover that you did. Oh, that's, wow. why, that's why I did the exclusives, so they could do this with issue one if they wanted to. Oh, okay. Yeah, we we sold all those, so um, we'll have to see. Hell yeah, what we're gonna do with those? So, and you can even sign up for our, our own pool list. So, every time a new issue comes out, uh, you'll get billed and shipped directly to your house. That way, you don't miss an issue. You don't miss anything. Mm -hmm. So that's right. Boom. And in the future, there could be a crossover between Mercenary Guild and Hardly Heroes, but. Probably. Ooh. That's a story for another time. A little mm -hmm. little annual, little Shattermare Comics annual. Oh, I have yeah. some ideas for Sorry, it. Actually. I have some ideas for it. When Sweet. when Morb and the dwarf meet each other and the whole wolf thing, yeah, that's going to be interesting. <laughs> Harbeck and Malchus. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. You're part of the pack. It's like what? <laughs> Uh, yeah. I've never been all new, game. no yeah. reprints. Oh. No <laughs> reprints. <laughs> That's right. Um, no still reprints. only thirty-five makes, yeah. cents. When Harbeck <laughs> starts, oh. when Harbeck starts biting the enemy, memories. Mm -hmm. Oh, will, oh man, Malcolm will be like, "Why is he stealing my move? Why is he doing <laughs> what I do? <laughs> you shouldn't be biting anybody. That's my thing." <laughs> Weird. It's a dwarf. Um, oh, speaking of which, I was at Gotta a little love show. Doors. Yeah, I was at a oh, little yeah. show in uh, Jacksonville the other day, and uh, these kids were coming. I, well, I shouldn't say kids; I don't know how old they were, but uh, these guys just came out with their own comic, and uh, it was cool. Uh, it has potential, and I looked at it, and I picked up a copy, and I saw their variant cover, and their variant cover had the old school like twenty-five cents on it you just reminded cool. me of that and i'm like well yeah. how much is this and they're like 10 bucks <laughs> I'm like, oh. mm -hmm. oh. but it says yep. 25 cents i know that's just set dressing 25 no, cents in 1973 right yeah mm -hmm. yeah so anyways it's 10 bucks now <laughs> right yeah oh my god well, uh thanks for thanks for joining us tracy this is great. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you guys for having me. It's, 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 it's been a hell of a good time. It was a oh, huge honor. Thank... I'm such a fan of everything you've done in in D and D again. A D and D and the Hobbit are basically what got me into fantasy, and uh, I wouldn't be in Mercenary Guild is pure dripped fantasy, and I would not be doing this if it wasn't for that influence. And I've dreamed of doing this my whole life and it's great that people like luke and brian and frank have helped make my dreams come to life mm -hmm. and uh and folks like yourself so just realize that this is a tribute to folks like you and guy gax and harness and and god rest their Man. souls yeah and, uh, thank you I, so and much I hope you enjoy it i hope you enjoy it and uh, i i want to get you a free signed copy for sure because awesome uh, awesome you know it, it it means so much to me what, what you know your artwork your i can't you know i i can't draw like you i can't or i could if i tried but i just suck um but i can write <laughs> you know i can write i can write man i can write 
and uh, that's come great. up with ideas and characters and stories and scenarios and that's what i'm doing just like a dm look folks if you're a dm out there just start writing your adventures on a big yeah. word document and and put it out mm-hmm. there man because it it's a story and it's a story that people will want to read so it, because it's better than the mainstream corporate bullshit so but anyways thank you trace i i appreciate that oh man you're very welcome yeah. that means a lot to me i mean seriously yeah Stay this, tuned this was a that. lot of fun and dude thank you so much for uh <laughs> telling us who that artist was jeff easley uh seriously feel oh, and, I, and i've been looking for that artist for years so i'm glad i could rock, help dude yeah <laughs> thank, thank you, you so man. much yeah all right yeah all thank right you. guys thank you for having thanks, me chat. and uh yep. thanks know, chat thanks, hopefully, hopefully you'll have me on again oh yeah absolutely oh yeah i, we'll, uh, I I'll, I'll hit you up to come hang out with us on topic you can come draw with us cool oh, oh that would be go. fun yeah, Hell yeah, yeah dude. All right. That would be great having you on a draw stream. See you guys yep, on the that... next episode of Shadowmare Live. Goodbye. Peace.